Good Saturday evening and welcome to the Veterans Memorial Stadium here in Coffeeville. I'm Shane Neal alongside with me Matt Jordan as we get ready for the Coffeeville Community College Red Ravens and the Butler Grizzlies on homecoming weekend. Matt, a little bit chillier than we've been used to this season and uh, I think that'll obviously showcase itself on the field. I think we could see a lot of running the ball tonight. Yeah, this is what I like to call football weather, Shay. We're no finally about it. kind of into that point of the season where uh, we separate the boys from the men on the football field who can deal with uh, the, the cold. And I've seen some CCC players down there, uh, pregame warm-ups that were uh, shirtless. So they're not affected by the cold at all. It does benefit a team like Coffeyville that plays good defense and wants to run the football. And uh, – Butler, who likes to air it out, maybe not so benefited. Absolutely, and it's been a good day for the state of Kansas. Wildcats shut out Houston. The Kansas Jayhawks, big win over Oklahoma. Uh, so Coffeyville looking to make it 3-0 and for the good guys here on this Saturday. Bill Kinley wins last night. Bill so. Kinley, Aaron Tunstall, man. I'll tell you what. Yeah, what a performance. Almost, fi what almost 500 yards of offense, seven touchdowns. That's unbelievable. Yeah, it was great. And, great, uh, great night for the Exciting for the state that we'll get to see that young man another Friday yep, night. Yep, absolutely. Uh, but, Matt, uh, last week against Salina, we saw four different Raven running backs score touchdowns. Of course, we know what Amiri Wiggins and what Azario Smith can do. Uh, when they have the ball in their hands. But as the year's gone on, we've seen more Trey Jones. We've seen some Xavier Parks, the true freshman. Coach Liker says, we'll talk to him in just a few minutes, but he likes all four guys. He thinks all four are good football players. And on a night like tonight, we could see all four in heavy doses. Yeah, that's uh, kind of like Jeff Liker bread and butter. You know, uh, Coach Liker loves a stable of running backs. And when he has two, three, four guys that he can lean on. That's when he is at the most comfortable. They did not have that earlier in the season, and uh, we saw that affect that team early on. But now they've kind of found that rhythm with those extra guys and uh, are feeling good at the middle part of the season. Absolutely. And, Matt, uh, something else that's you know really been clicking for the Ravens as the year has gone on is this defensive line and this pass rush. Another seven sacks last week against Salina. Feels like them generating a pass rush has been something that's improved as the year has gone on. And obviously we're going to get to Tanner Murray in a little bit. But if they want to beat the Butler Grizzlies tonight, they have to put pressure on QB1. Yeah, you can't make a guy comfortable. On a night like this, when if you're rushing throws, the ball's going to come out awkwardly anyway because of the weather. And then if you're making the quarterback rush throws, the ball's going to come out even more awkwardly. So, you know, having those guys fly off the ends, try to force pressure, uh, it could be a rough night for Butler. No doubt it could be. Ravens and the Butler Grizzlies on homecoming weekend here in Coffeyville. It's the Red Raven pregame show on US 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network. Big thanks to our sponsors here tonight. Of course, Medical Lodge, Community State Bank, Coffeyville Community College, Windsor Place at Home Care, Gillum Liquor, Derailed Commodity, Taco Mayo, NDB of Coffeyville, Coffeyville Regional Medical Center, and Romans Chevrolet. We're going to step away for two minutes. When we come back, our weekly pregame conversation with Coach Liker. We're counting down to kickoff. Ravens, Grizzlies. We're back in two minutes with Coach Liker on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. adult daycare and much more are all offered visit medicallodges.com or stop by 2921 west first in coffeeville and learn more medical lodges coffeeville where they serve and enhance the lives of others with caring hands this is community state bank at work this is community state bank at work This is Community State Bank at work in our community. From kids' activities to school programs to funding home and business loans, every day Community State Bank is at work in our neighborhood. Whether you bank at Community State Bank or not, they're working for you every day. Community State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. I'm Mike Avey, and at Community State Bank, we believe in Coffeeville. You have a choice on where to go and who you want to be. Here at Coffeeville Community College, you can be you. We can make you workforce ready at one of our technical campuses, be a student athlete, join an honors program or an activity, have a voice with student government, and be involved with student life events. Our school believes in our red and white traditions, providing you with a quality education and preparing you for the next journey in life. Once you experience our campus, you know you've made the right choice. Let us help you make our story your story and become Raven Proud. 
If you could use a little help around the house, Windsor Place at-home care is the perfect solution for you. Their caregivers are prepared to help you with laundry, meals, housekeeping, shopping, and more. These helpful services are so reasonably priced, you can afford to pay for them yourself. In many cases, long-term care insurance or other sources provide assistance with the cost. Home is where the help is. Call Windsor Place at-home care, 800-982-1866. Homecoming weekend at Coffeeville Community College and the Red Ravens getting ready for a matchup against the Butler Grizzlies. It's the Red Raven pregame show and as always we're joined by head coach of the Red Ravens, Jeff Liker. Coach, appreciate the time. We're excited for this one, but really quickly to go back to your game against Kansas Wesleyan last week, uh, another great opportunity for your guys to get some reps on the field. We saw some guys that maybe haven't gotten consistent week-to-week snaps, get some playing time. We've talked about how crucial that could be with the emergence of injuries late in the season, but I think overall my biggest takeaway was you got to play all three quarterbacks, and I think all three quarterbacks had their moments of looking really good. Yeah, I mean, those kind of games, you, you don't know if you'll ever have many opportunities and with the JV game happening um, in place of a prep school. Uh, we were able to get uh, a lot of the kids involved and, and uh, let them play and play against another team with officials and uniforms and so on because sometimes it's a little tough to, to uh, you know, sell to – you know the kids that you're going to be playing against this group or that group, and and it's but it was a nice setting, a nice uh, uh, crowd of family members. It was their homecoming and family weekend with all their students, so it really turned out to be a decent day as far as the the the, the layout of a college football game. You know, compared to you know playing a prep school or whatever. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I think uh, a theme that we've talked about this year is uh, Coffeeville Community College needing to win games in the trenches. And I think that was the biggest takeaway from this one. Of course, 309 yards rushing for your team. You had uh, four different running backs find the end zone with Amiri, with Azario, and then also with Trey Jones and Xavier Parks. And uh, you also held the uh, the Yotes offense to negative two yards rushing. You also had seven sacks. So your offensive line did great creating holes on uh, for your running game. And your defensive line did great uh, limiting the running game and getting to the quarterback. So great day for the trenches. Again, a lot of people played. It was the best part about the, the whole weekend was seeing all the kids get a chance to go out on the field when it when it mattered. No doubt about it. And, Coach, well, before we get into uh, this matchup with Butler, of course, homecoming weekend, we talked about it. And uh, a pretty special weekend for uh, a couple uh, Red Raven uh, legends of the football uh, of the football program that are uh, going into the Hall of Fame this weekend. Yeah, every year it's just a who's who. It's such a neat place to be and to be able to be a part of the Hall of Fame here with the history behind this program. Um, Martrell Spate uh, from 11 and 12 in his time here. Uh, Sammy Williams, 94-95, went to Oklahoma. Uh, And then uh, four or five years in the NFL, uh, Bruce Pickens, uh, number three pick in the overall NFL draft after he came out of Nebraska. And then Earl Henry's a, a local Kansas guy from Wichita that's the um, single season tackles leader still at this school. So, and they had a great two years at Pittsburgh State. So we got a, a variety, um, different uh, decades. Uh, so it's kind of cool to see different ages, obviously, but every year it's just it's just so fun to do this for the football program and see guys come back. Absolutely, and something I joked about with uh, Brad Weber a couple of days ago was uh, two linebackers, an offensive lineman, and a defensive back. That's the most Red Raven Hall of Fame class I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Defense and offensive line. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, and you got, uh, like I said, there's and year after year after year, there's going to be choices. Um, I try to wait ten years, you know, in the in the selections of uh, of our people, and, uh, and there's still quite a few people that deserve to be in, and hopefully one day we'll get those those gentlemen in as well. No doubt about it. And coach, uh, looking at this Butler team, uh, four and three on the season, but uh, one of the things I threw out there was, of course, their three losses to some of the best programs in the country in close games. So I. Uh, I made the point to say I think Butler might be the best four and three team in the country. Uh, but what are some of the things you see from the Grizzlies? Well, they, I mean, defensively, that's one of the key things that they 
that they sell every year. Um, a great running game. Um, it's been a little bit tougher on this year in the run game, but yeah, they find ways to win. Special teams uh, throwing it. Um, you know, our our conference this year is evidenced by us having trouble early. Is is just parity, you know. There's just other than Hutch, who who uh, and Garden gave them a hell of a run last week. It could have gone either way at twenty to eighteen at the time, but. Um, you know, it's a long season, and for some of these teams that have to hang on, like Hutch does every week, to continue to be un- unbeaten. But, um, you know, Butler lost to Garden in the opener, and then uh, had a tough one with Iowa Western last week, um, 27 to 20, and they're on the 10 yard line. 28 21, whatever it was, but on the 10 yard line, and there was an interception apparently that. I've heard people say that he didn't catch it and they should have had another set of downs or another play or two, you know. So they may have got it, got uh, it taken away from them a chance to go throw in the end zone or get it in the end zone to tie it up and maybe win it or send it into overtime. But, you know, Butler's going to be a premier program every year. That's just the, the, the history behind them. Um, and so this we, we expect this to be a heck of a battle. Coach, something that's interesting to me about this Butler team, uh, they do have a very uh, potent passing attack, like you said, averaging over 200 yards per game through the air. But it's not a very efficient uh, part of their offense. They're a quarterback on the season, their starting quarterback, Tanner Murray, less than 50% completion percentage, just at 1,300 yards and 12 touchdowns. So he gets the numbers. Uh, but not exactly, you know, the most efficient way of getting there. So with how your uh, front seven's been playing and how well you've been rushing the quarterback, you might be able to disrupt some of that passing attack for the Grizzlies. Well, we need to if we're going to have success as a football team. Uh, our defense has to play, uh, as we ask them to every week, um, play very, very well and not let uh, Tanner get out and run with it. When things break down and he gets to scramble and people get to reroute their, their, uh, where they're going, it makes it tough to chase and to, and to, and to cover. Uh, but he's throwing some balls uh, up for big plays and, uh, you know, throws them down the field. And, and the 50% things are probably a little bit deceiving because when he is hooking up, they're, they're getting it in the end zone or they're getting big chunks. And we, got, we hope to eliminate very many of those. Coach, so they have a trio of receivers that really kind of share the wealth. They uh, also have a, a tight end that has nine catches on the air. But two, uh, their leading receiver, 19 catches, Justin Stevens. But they also have more of a red zone threat in Jamari and McDougal with five touchdowns on 14 catches. So uh, something that uh, you're – of course, you do have def- uh, veteran defensive backs. That's one of the more experienced rooms on this team. Uh, but they're going to have to be ready for different types of receivers that the Grizzlies bring to the field. A couple route runners. Uh, a couple more physical guys down in the red zone, but uh, they can beat you in a, a couple different ways with their receiving room. You know, we just got to go cover the routes, the the, the concepts that, that Butler will will uh, put together. Uh, we've got zone coverage, we got man coverage, we've got to uh, anticipate, we got to obviously defend it, we got to tackle it, and um, not give up the big play. You know, if we can find a way to get uh, uh, some turnovers from it, that'd be huge. I think it's still going to come down to a, two physical football teams going at it uh, on a on a field that, um, you know, we get to finally be at home. It seemed like a long time ago we were at home, you know, at second week, and here we, we are in the eight or nine weeks already. But, um, it, you know, hopefully, I mean, it's going to be a typical butler Coffeeville battle. Coach, uh, last thing before we move uh, to uh, your, uh, the defensive side of the ball, but uh, something I noticed against Kansas Wesley, and I think it, it polished itself up over t- over the course of the game. But I think especially early in that game, uh, we saw your defense, you know, bend but not break, but also at the same time, couple third down conversions, couple penalties on third downs. Uh, you, you know, you, your defense was able to kind of get composed and get stops against Wesley, and but against Butler, those third down penalties and those third down conversions could really hurt. You know, and they hurt us early in the year. That's why we got off to such a slow start. And, and so we we got to make sure as we keep playing week to week that we try to nullify some of those problems that don't put us in a hole. But at the same time, we're, I think, better offensively. We find a little bit more of a niche with Jeremiah with what he can give us um, that hopefully takes a little bit of the load off the defense, not having to be so right all the time while we're 
struggling to figure out what we want to do and how well we can do it. But offense has got to help the D, defense has got to help the O to make it a complete ball game uh, of success. And as well as the special teams, you know, we got to be good in the specials. Can't give up block kicks. Um, got to make kicks. You know, there's just the variety of things that make up a football game. You got to be right more often than not in order to come out on top. No doubt about it. And this defense uh, for Butler, like you said, very good, very similar to Coffeyville in a lot of ways, and that they're really uh, an aggressive-minded defense. They go for turnovers. They go for those big plays. Uh, but that also leaves them open at times to allowing some yardage, and they give up about 150 yards a game of rushing, about 180 yards a game through the air. With your running game looking up very strong last week, and of course your passing game, the efficiency's gotten better and better as the year's gone on. You have to feel like uh, you know if you play your cards right and don't try to force anything, you should be able to move the ball well against this team. We hope we can get some things done up front. That's the, the big key is the O-line, uh, run blocking, pass protecting, uh, being accurate with, with our with our throws, um, uh, running good routes, you know, catching the football when it is thrown to us. Uh, these are all things that hurt us early, you know, and, and nullified some things that we had going that we couldn't go out and be successful. So, you know, this ball game as well as the final two are just good people. You're going to face really good folks, and so you, if you're going to have a chance to win, you got to go make some of those kind of plays and make those things happen. Absolutely. Coach, this uh, running game for your team has really uh, opened up, I think, in the last couple of weeks. You mentioned uh, Jeremiah, a big part of that, but also – uh, we've seen over the last couple of weeks more of a dosage of Trey Jones. We saw some Xavier Parks uh, against uh, Kansas Wesleyan as well. Uh, so we know what Azario and uh, Omiri can do. They've done it all year. They did it again on Sunday. But uh, nice to have that depth in that room because when you play a physical game against Butler like we're anticipating or when you play a physical game against Iowa Western or Garden down the road, it's nice to have three, four guys in that room that you trust versus maybe just one or two. And they're good players. I mean, that's the thing. They're, they're very capable of, of carrying the load. It's just we've got um, a couple of veterans. We've got a couple of young guys. And um, taking care of the football, getting some good schemes blocked up front, and giving them a little bit of room to run. They get some room to run. They're, they're awfully hard because to tackle because they, they can run with speed. They're physical. Um, it's going to be a it's going to be a a tale of the same kind of game, you know, from both sides. I think we're we're trying to establish a run game and open up a passing game. They may be trying to do it the other way because they haven't rushed it as well as they typically have, but at the same time they're throwing it better. Coach, uh, something that uh, we've talked about as well over the last couple of weeks is the uh, the growth of this passing game and your receivers kind of getting more comfortable with uh, getting open running routes and uh, really opening that uh, passing game up as the year's gone on. We saw another tight end make a, a, a touchdown catch in Remington easily. We also saw the return of uh, Krishan Crenshaw, uh, which, uh, you know, obviously at this point in the season, having a lot of capable guys in that room uh, that can uh, spell some guys that are maybe feeling a little bit of fatigue or... Uh, just have options in that wide receiver room and tight end room, uh, it feels like this position group is getting better and better each week. You know, I think the fact that we're moving the football on the ground just opens up a lot of other things, and, and we, we don't have to be as, as precise, but when we when I say precise, you know, we want to throw accurate balls and catch uh, balls when they're thrown to us, but the fact that we can run or throw in in my mind opens up a lot of things but if we can run the football and be effective and move the chains and get first downs then you don't know when the throw is coming you know you got to commit more people to the run game that opens up a few more doors maybe over the top um, so we just got to play it by ear and see how well we can get some things moved in order to open up the passing game again. Really dynamic uh, edge rush duo for this Butler defense uh, that have combined for ten and a half sacks on the season, six and a half for Marlon Dean. He leads the team uh, in sacks this season and tackles for loss. Uh, and then also on the other side, they have uh, Haram Stretti, who has four as well. So with your offensive line having had some highs, had some lows this year, like a lot of other position groups on this team, uh, how do you make sure that you uh, give Jeremiah time to throw? Well, our tackles have to play well because that's where those edge guys are. And then inside, you know, centers and guards have got to handle their inside D tackles. Now, they do a lot of slanting and angling. There's, they're not going to just stand in one place. So you've got to be ready and anticipate 
certain things happening. When they slant inside, then they're bringing edge pressure. So they're going to be possibly bringing some blitzes and things that we've got to be ready to get get it blocked correctly, get the ball gone. Uh, we got to win a route in that same deal, so then we're not just wasting downs, you know. Yeah. So that's those are going to be. Um, uh, the game's going to be played in the trenches, that's for sure. That's where it's got to start for everybody. But uh, we've liked the way our guys have played up front uh, this year, honestly. We've got a few moments that I'm sure we could pinpoint that said we, we didn't have a great run-stopping D or a great pass-rush D. But for the most part, we just got to put all three pieces of the defense together, the backers, the secondary, and the D-line, and not – First of all, not make the DBs have to cover forever. That's by getting a great pass rush and getting the guy down. At the same time, the backers got to be able to get into underneath zones and, and take away some easy throws for the for the cue to, to get the ball off quicker. And then D-line, again, get off blocks and go run and make tackles. So those are things that we every day we, we practice, we preach, we talk, we, we uh, uh, anticipate or we expect to get those kind of uh, performances. Coach, uh, another big play for your special teams last week with another blocked punt. Uh, Butler has not had a punt blocked this year, and one of the best punter names in the nation, I'm sure, Chevy Edwards. Uh, he has not had a punt blocked this year, but, of course, your special team makes big plays, and that helps you win games. Uh, so uh, what's the special teams group doing to hopefully uh, have a game-changing play? Yeah, uh, we blocked one last week, and it was really in a moment where we were trying really just to let him punt it. But, you know, another kid gave effort, and and they were slow getting it off, so that's how those things happen. And we're going to be in the same boat. Butler blocked the kick by Iowa Western and turned it back for a touchdown. So we've got to get our punt game. Uh, our Cade's got to catch and get it gone too. Um, but we just got to we just got to attack, and and we can't we can't try to say go block it, but watch for the fake. You know, you you can't you got to be aggressive and go get it. Or you're going to play off and, and block people and try to set up a return. So um, we'd like to get in there. Last year we blocked the kick and, and got it down. Should have caught it in the end zone, and we ended up getting it to two or three, but managed to punch it in, you know. Uh, changed the game. That was just the difference right there. So if some, who's going to be that guy? You know, that's the piece that we all would love to see somebody just come out of nowhere and get a block and change the game. No doubt. And Coach, final thing I have for you, appreciate your time as always. Uh, we have high school football playoffs starting this week around the area, and a question I've been asking a lot of them, uh, and it's kind of it's kind of the same question but a little bit different, but how do you balance the uh, emotion of a big game and a big moment but also not let it consume you? And with it being homecoming week against a rival, Butler and Coffeyville, of course, it's well documented. These two schools do not like each other in terms of athletics. How do you uh, – you guys are going to be fired up for this one, and how do you make sure they use that energy and that, that that fire the right way and not let it kind of get in their heads on the field? Well, you, you, you better handle yourself because if you're going to go out there and get penalties for extracurricular or late hits, it's just going to hurt your team, you know. So we've you got to be smart football players, but once the ball's kicked, it's just another football game. Yeah, we can – hype it up all we want but when the ball's kicked finally you gotta you gotta think and go play and do your job and go be efficient and and make sure that you're not the weak link you know in the deal and that's what we ask of the kids and i think both sides probably dictate that in their in their uh, practices and meetings trying to tell kids that it's going to come down to a mistake here or there and maybe make the difference in the game so who's it going to be Red Ravens looking to get the big-time win at home against the Butler Grizzlies. Coach Jeff Liker good enough to join us before the game. Coach, best of luck tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you. Big thanks to Jeff Liker for joining us. It's the Red Raven pregame show. We'll be back with more action as we get ready for kickoff in two minutes. Celebrate Paul with Celebration Savings at Killam Liquor in Coffeyville. Save $7 a bottle on Jim Beam Apple Whiskey and Fire Whiskey. Just $23.99 for a 1.75 bottle. Choose your favorite flavor, Rainbow, Onyx, Aurora, and Regular on 750's Crystal Head Assorted Vodkas. Only $53.99 to $62.99. Get Fireball 99 Flavors Trick or Treat Bags. 15 bottles in a cute bag for $13.89 plus tax. And save a dollar on Fireball 750's for $14.99. Celebrate Paul at Killam Liquor, 1713 West 8th Street in Coffeyville.
Make your home more comforting with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local Derailed Commodity Flooring and Furniture, Brazelton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin and Butler, Missouri. Taco Mayo's new filet ole steak bowl is piled high with fillet mignon. It's filet mignon. A heaping bowl loaded with refried beans, Mexicali rice, cheddar jack, sour cream, and tender filet mignon. It's filet mignon. Filet mignon. A uh, filet mignon. Filet mignon. Filet mignon. Savor the juicy filet ole steak bowl stacked with filet mignon and only from Taco Mayo. That's a wrap. No, that's a bowl. That's or even a boat. Do you rent or own your own home? If you have any of these, call NDB in Coffeeville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies so that they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeeville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. Back here from the... With me, let's go over our keys to the game here as we wrap up the Red Raven pregame show. Matt, first one for me, of course, is a given. Red Raven defensive line has been fantastic the last couple weeks, but they're going to have to generate pressure on the mobile Tanner Murray tonight. Yeah, you got to bring pressure tonight. We have talked a little bit about it in the pregame, but uh, weather like this can make... Uh, the the ball hard to throw. When you add the pressure on top of that, it's just another element the quarterback can have to do with. Secondary, show your experience. The Ravens' most experienced room is that secondary with Jabari Tiller, Adrian Patterson, and Cam Pearson. Butler's got some good receivers, a couple of them that have made some big impacts this season. They need a good game from the Ravens' secondary today. Show your sophomore experience. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we, we've talked about uh, that, that core all season long and how important they are, not only in coverage, but we talk about Jabari Taylor screaming off the edge on corner blitzes. Uh, that's a big part of it as well. And Matt, final thing I have tonight, Butler has not had a punt blocked all year. One of the best punter names in the country, by the way, Chevy Edwards. A fantastic name, but he has not had a punt block this year. We know how what the Ravens special teams likes to do in making game-changing plays. They blocked a punt last week against Wesleyan. I think the special teams need to make a game-changing play tonight to come out with a win. Yeah, Coach Coach Liker likes to have uh, be good in all three elements. Special teams is a big part of that, whether it's the blocking kicks or blocking punts. They generally find a way to manufacture points themselves, so we'll see if they uh, can do that here tonight. Absolutely. Red Ravens, Butler Grizzlies coming up next to the Red Raven pregame show in the books. Kickoff coming up in 60 seconds on US 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network. locations in Coffeeville and Independence with extended and Saturday hours in Coffeeville. If you need a physician or need to make an appointment, please call 620-688-6566. That's 620-688-6566. It's truck season at Roman Chevrolet. All 2023 Chevy Silverados qualify for 0% interest, no payments for 90 days, and $1,000 cash allowance for qualified buyers. We have a great selection of Silverados, and 2024 models are showing up daily. Roman Chevrolet will donate $5 to the American Cancer Society for every social media post shared. The goal is to donate $170,000. Test drive a new 2023 Chevy Silverado and check out the huge selection of pre-owned vehicles at Roman Chevrolet, 2313 West Main Independence, your Silverado City. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. This is Coffeeville Community College Red Raven Football. Let's get ready to rumble! Brought to you by Roman Coffeeville Regional Medical Center, NDB of Coffeeville, Taco Mayo, Derailed Commodity, Gillum Liquor, Windsor Place and Home Care, Coffeeville Community College, Community State Bank, and Medical Lodge. Y'all ready for this? 
Ravens kick it off as we get in here in the vet. It's through the end zone for a touchback. And that's where the Butler Grizzlies will take over. Butler tonight in the white jerseys, gold helmets, purple trim. Ravens in the red jerseys with the white trim and white helmets. Good evening. Happy you're with us. I'm Shane Eel. Matt Jordan alongside with me. Matt, good to be back in the vet. Feels like we haven't been here in a while. It also feels like we haven't done a game together in a while. No you know, a lot of road games and some canceled games and you traveling by yourself up to Salina last weekend. But we're back at home, homecoming night, and it's uh, a beautiful night for oh, football. Glorious. Uh, we're sitting about 41 degrees and Freezing rain here tonight in Coffeeville, so we're feeling good. First down snap, Tanner Murray looking for a screen out wide, gets a block, and he's across the 30-35 up to about the 37. That'll be a first down gain of 12. Good blocks on the perimeter there by the Grizzlies on the first play. The Grizzlies don't have uh, much success running the football, but those little quick screens, little quick passes are going to be ex like long extended That's runs for them tonight. No yeah. doubt about it. Tanner Murray also one of their better running options this season. He's empty in the gun here on first down. That's a screen pass outside, and Pearson will help clean that up, a gain of about seven. Catch was made there by number four for the Grizzlies. I get my, you know, I should have had my handy-dandy roster sheet open at the start of the game, but, you know, that's my fault. And uh, that was Yudoka, uh, excuse me, that was... I'm not sure who number four on offense is, No, because he hasn't caught a pass all season, according to what I'm looking at. There you go in the pistol and they run into each other. And now Murray running for his life. That might have gotten a yard, but a big miscommunication there by the Grizzlies there. And that was Kalen Shankle in the backfield. He, he went left and I think uh, Murray was expecting him to go right and they collided and lucky they didn't lose the football. There by just being able to uh, turn a negative play into at least a gain of a yard. Third down and three to go here for Butler at their own 46-yard line. Ravens trying to get an early stop on defense. Shankle in the motion to the left, and they'll try to hand it off on a quick inside zone. Ravens deny it about a yard short. And it'll be a fourth down and short here for the Grizzlies. Right at about their uh, midfield stripe. It'll be, it'll be about their own 47. We'll see how aggressive they are early in this one. It looks like pretty aggressive, Matt. Knowing Butler, they're going to be pretty aggressive here. Uh, then maybe they thought about it again. They're, they are punting into the wind, so that is going to affect how uh, how good of a punt they can get. Uh, Coffeyville should get good starting field position here. Good to have Krishan Crenshaw back. He was back last week against Kansas Wesleyan. He'll be back to receive the punt here for the Red Ravens. Red Raven defense, of course, you have to be weary of a fake. You know, never... You can never get too comfortable on special teams and delay a game, delay a game call against Butler, and now maybe that takes a little bit of the likelihood. Of fake. Yeah, I, I'd say the fake, the chance for fake probably uh, closer to zero percent now, and um, but it makes it harder. I mean, it does you, you'd think maybe trying to set up more of a coffin corner, but with the way the wind's blowing in their face, Krishan, Crenshaw just might just be a, it might be a night where it might be a night where the returners just don't go after the ball. Hard you, to you don't really know where it's going to go. On a night like tonight. Clean snap, running start. Chevy Edwards got it off, and it is going to take a Raven bounce, and they'll start at their own 41, and there you go. Wind helping out Coffeyville early. Great Red field Ravens. position for Jeremiah Moore in the offense. Coffeyville with a chance to set the tone early. Defense did their job. They got the uh, the turnover, or, or the force the punt. I was going to say three now, but they did pick up the first down. Uh, they got the... The, they forced the punt, so now the offense with uh, good starting field position, a chance to, to set the tone early. And Matt, this Butler team, 4-3 and three on this season. They're four, three losses to Iowa Western by seven, to Hutch, of course, as well, and to Garden City in week one. And I told Coach Liker, I'll tell you the same thing. This might be the best 4-3 and three team in the country. Yeah, Butler, it's a, it's a tough league, tough of schedule, but Butler's very good. Little jet sweep, fake the jet sweep. Jeremiah Moore takes off across the 45, across midfield. And he's up to about the 47-yard line, gain of 13, first down for the freshman quarterback, Jeremiah Moore. 
Good start there for the Ravens. And that's something we can see quite a bit tonight. Rain, cold weather. Obviously, Jeremiah, uh, great runner as is. I think we could see a whole lot of read option tonight from Coffeyville. Well, since Jeremiah took over at quarterback, Coffeyville picking up a couple wins. They're 2-5. and five. You mentioned Butler being the best 4-3 and three team in the country. I can say that a doubt in my mind that Coffeyville is the best 2-5 and five team in the country. You ain't lying. First down here, Moore in the pistol. He's got a running back to his right. And fumbled snap! And I think the Grizzlies fell on it. They did. And that's something we could see quite a bit tonight. Slippery ball with the conditions. Jeremiah Moore did not catch it cleanly, and Butler gets an early turnover. That's Moore's first fumble of the season. Freshman, fifth turnover. freshman linebacker Kenton Simmons was the one who fell on it for the Grizzlies. So both teams get one first down on their first play, and then... Drive stalls out, one via punt, one via turnover. Now the Raven defense will have to defend their own territory. First down, Tanner Murray takes the shotgun snap, back to throw, looking. Pressure comes, Murray is dropped. Caden Ross was the first one in there. We talked about it in the pregame, needing to get pressure. So far they've done a good job. First time they got a sack, but they've definitely been in the face of Murray. We saw the screens on the first two plays of the of the first drive. Uh, I think they're going to really have to rely on that tonight. And that's another uh, sign of a good pass rush, Matt. First guy missed. He evaded the first rusher. Second guy right behind him to clean it up. Running back moves up to the line of scrimmage. Second down and 15. And they try to hand it out. That ball came out. And the Ravens recover. It's recovered by Griffin Lampton. You take the ball. No, you take the ball. The law both of teams. averages, Matt. Yeah, the both, both teams... Turning it over early, it uh, may be uh, this may be what we're set to see tonight. We we thought sloppy football was a chance with as cold as it is, and with as uh, wet as it is, it was a good opportunity to see a lot of mistakes made. You so just got to be the one that makes the least. We're four minutes into this game, and we've had three possessions. How about that? Jeremiah Moore under center this time, takes the snap, looking to hand it off, and that's Osario Smith, and he's going backwards a couple yards. Great penetration there by Butler. One to greet him was the linebacker, Armand Hale. And Matt, I told you when I walked in today, you know, maybe it's the optimism in me speaking, but this really felt like it was going to be that 17-14 style of game. I think we're just going to see a tough, physical, gritty football game and really, the team that scores two touchdowns tonight might win it. Yeah, I think this is going to be kind of one of those grinded out games where we're going to see uh, long, long methodical drives and whoever, like I said, makes the least amount of mistakes. Second down and 12, Moore in the shotgun, catches that one cleanly, tries to keep it himself, tries to bounce outside, breaks a tackle, and now he's driven backwards. And he'll lose a couple yards. That was Demarcius Robinson, one of their top tacklers on the season. Coming back from a little bit of an injury, but uh, he's expected to play a big role tonight. And he did on that play. And Moore looked like he was going to escape the pressure, make something happen. And well, that shows the speed of Butler, because he was just one or two steps away from getting to the edge. And if he got to the edge, he was gone for 20, 25 yards. I thought he was going to be able to get there, and they closed out real quick, which is impressive with his how, how quick and uh, fast Moore's first and second steps are. Third and 14 here for Coffeyville at the Butler 47-yard line. Each team has turned the ball over once already tonight. Jaden Dozier in motion. Moore takes the snap. Hand off to Amiri Wiggins. He breaks one tackle. He breaks two tackles, and he'll fight his way forward for about three yards close to the original line of scrimmage. But that tells you what kind of game we're in store for tonight, Matt. Third and 14, and not a very aggressive play call at all. Yeah, when did your back? You thought maybe you might be able to take a shot uh, throwing the ball down the field, but Coffeyville is going to take... Uh, the, the game of field position here, punt it away. And, this uh, might be the kind of game play. where a safety yeah. could come into play. Play good defense. Kay Dowd also uh, has not had a punt block this year, so it's a battle of oh, the... Uh, no. Oh, no. I'll hey, knock on wood good, for you. Good That's call. the announcer's good call. jinx right there. Good call. That's a high snap, and it's not going to be blocked, but it is going to be trouble. And a high snap, and Butler able to tackle Dowd to the ground. I'm not going to say that's your fault. That's not my fault because that's not directly what I but, said. Uh, <laughs> I never said anything about a bad snap. This this game is something else. I'll tell on. you what. I'll tell you what. 
So it feels like we've been here for three quarters and we're not even six minutes in. Yeah, I saw a game that felt like that last night, but it was for completely different you reasons. Ain't, you ain't lying. Last night was a track meet. This has been a little bit different. It's more like the hammer throw. <laughs> <laughs> this is a shot put. I was going to say. Watching the 400 last night. This is a shot put. 100 meter sprint to welcome to the shot put. That one out into the flat. It's caught. It'll be a gain of about three. Tackle by number one. Jabari Tiller was about a step away from catching that one and taking it the other way. You saw that too. That was the uh, tight end, Blake Reeder, with the catch. Generous spot for the Ravens. They call that only a gain of two. Second down and eight. Back to throw. Another trying to get a quick pass. That one is dropped. And that was Justin Stevens, their top wide receiver. The freshman out of Mays leads the team in catches. And uh, we've very clearly been shown in the first half of this first quarter uh, that that ball is tough to catch tonight. Oh, uh, the wind is, the, the cold, the wind, the rain, everything is playing havoc on tonight's game. Third down and eight here for Butler. Pistol snap for Tanner Murray. Back to throw, pressure comes. He steps up, he plants the feet, and what a hit! And a... Uh, Pass Big celebration as well. That's the linebacker, Cedrian Langston, Matt. He Tackle laid the 30. boom on that play. That's the way you separate the ball from the player. Unfortunately, there is an injured player there now. That's the kind of hit that makes you a linebacker. When you get to the middle school, high school level, and people are wondering if you're going to play safety, linebacker, defensive line, you start hitting like that, linebacker. You're a linebacker. <laughs> or safe, strong safety. It might be a strong those, safety, yes, but. Yeah, those two, those two positions. But. No doubt about it. 8.13 to go. That door is slamming in yeah, this first it's quarter. The how, it's the wind. <laughs> and you can see the rain out Even there. Even the press box is getting affected by the elements yeah. tonight. 8.13 to go in the first quarter. It's 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 chilly up here. We're, you know, we're obviously indoors with the, uh, with the wind closed out of the elements, but it is cold up here. Yeah, our friends with the Butler broadcast, uh, they came in and they said, is it always this cold up here? And I, I almost had to laugh because I'm like, no, actually, normally we're sweating up yeah. here. Fourth down coming up. Uh, Get, is this four down territory? I think it is. You got to think, right? Not. I don't think you're punting. Or, or you're not kicking. You're certainly not kicking. Yeah. And it looks like they are bringing the offense back out there. I mean, what do you have to lose? You don't get it. You're, yeah. I mean, Cottonville starting still 70 yards away from the end zone. I don't think we'll see any field goals not in the red zone. Really. Smith and false start. And that's what we've heard. Uh, you know, that's what we did a little bit of a scout before the game, Matt. We heard that this team struggled to run the ball, but a big part of that because of their false inexperienced start. offensive line and a false start on fourth down there. Uh, offensive line, especially the Jayhawk, is so important just with how talented each of these teams are. They've been able to you know, work through that inexperience because of how good their quarterback is, but a game like tonight, it's just not as easy. No doubt about it. Fourth and 13. Butler still showing like they're going to go for it. Now they're going to do the little pooch punt. And the flags come out first. It was a pretty good punt by Tanner great Murray. Job. That's false a great start. But another false team. start. Man. Offense. Offensive Offense. line killing the Grizzlies yeah. right now. You know who was great at that in the NFL? Ben Did Roethlisberger. Roethlisberger. Yep. Yes. Nobody well, did it better. And I was going to say, Big Ben, not your prototypical quarterback. That that man stood about 6'6", 260. Yeah. So that man, he made Cam Newton look like an average-sized quarterback. <laughs> there's, uh, there's many uh, high school Three football teams that their the quarterbacks are also the first. Now they bring out their the Ben Roethlisberger is like having Still. Keaton Jones as your quarterback. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Fourth down and 18 now for the Grizzlies. And a timeout taken, it looks like, by Coach Liker. Couple full start penalties have backed up. Butler looks like they're going to still try and go for something on fourth down. We'll be back in 60 seconds early in this one. No score. Both teams struggling with the elements. We're back in 60 on US 98, the Red Ravens Sports Center. Yeah. 
Yes, Donna. We can do that for all of our and bills. And you can do that for all of our bills. Yes, Donna. Community State Bank is almost as smart as you are. Well, thank you, Ralph. Glad I could help. I love you, Ralph. Community DIC. I love you too, Donna. You have a choice on where to go and who you want to be. Here at Coffeyville Community College, you can be you. We can make you workforce ready at one of our technical campuses, be a student athlete, join an honors program or an activity, have a voice with student government, and be involved with student life events. Our school believes in our red and white traditions, providing you with a quality education and preparing you for the next journey in life. Once you experience our campus, you know you've made the right choice. Let us help you make our story your story and become Raven Proud. Butler does send a punt away on this and it's down at about the 20-yard line. That's where the Ravens will start over. So Matt, what a what a journey we just went on. We went from going for it on fourth down to the quarterback punting the ball to the punter punting the ball. Yeah, they lined up uh, before the timeout like the they were going to go for it again or have the quarterback punt and then timeout. They made him think twice, and, and now Coffeyville takes back over at the 20. And not that that was a bad punt by Chevy Edwards, but Tanner Murray might have had the better punt. Yeah, He no, got that ball down to the 10. Did. It was the better punt. It worked out for Coffeyville. First down, Ravens. Jeremiah Moore in the shotgun. Each team's had the ball three times. We still have no scores. And a handoff right. Dario Smith trying to fight his way forward. Might have gotten about two yards there. Swarm of Butler defensive lineman there to Run meet him. By number six, Smith. You know it's going to be a long, interesting night when the punter is working overtime on the sideline, making sure he's got his form down. Absolutely. That kind of game. Going to be one of those games. Second down and seven here for the Ravens from their own 23-yard line. They officially hit the halfway point of the first quarter. Jeremiah Moore under center. Butler showing blitz here. And they try to hand it off, and was that? That ball did come out. I was going to say, it looked like that ball popped out of the hands of Smith. And a fight for it on the ground. A Raven did dive on that pile. And the offense did fall on it. I don't know if, for a while, I don't think they realized that ball came out. And then we saw a Raven kind of dive into that pile. And that saved the possession. But it is a loss of four yards. And that's already the, Matt, the fourth fumble of the game. It's I I don't I don't have words. I this thought, is incredible. Yeah, I don't have. You words. have gone from one extreme to the other. I know. I I thought last night was crazy. Tonight is already off to a wild start. Shotgun snap here, third and eleven. Last time Ravens had third and long. They were not very aggressive. This time Moore does show throw, and tries to duck, and then he's sacked. And that's number sixteen for the Grizzlies, Demarcius Robinson, who we've already called a couple times tonight. And yeah, we were alerted pregame uh, what he can do uh, defensively and the, the role he plays for Butler. And that was a coverage sack, too, because he, I mean, he had nowhere more, had nowhere to go with the football. Smart of him. He's, he's forced some footballs and thrown some interceptions this year. Especially, not right there. especially on a night like tonight where you don't know how that ball, the wind's going to take that ball. Pretty good kick, and it's going to get a huge Coffeyville bounce. Out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. And what a kick there. That's Dayton Smoot, the freshman out of Topeka. Punted there in place of Cade Dowd, and he put some leg into that one and got a friendly bounce as well. Yeah, he was the one I was watching warm up on the sideline. He uh, put a good charge in that one. It took a really great bounce. It makes me wonder, and I, I don't mean to speculate and play medical here, but... Uh, when Dowd took that tackle after the yeah. bad snap, did, it might have, did, he, did he get tweaked up a little bit? Because now we're seeing Dayton Smoot in the game at punter. First down, little out route. That'll be a gain of about seven. Still fighting his way to about the 45-yard line. Maybe a gain of eight yeah, in the second half. That was Jabari Tiller on the stop. Seven minutes or uh, almost ten minutes into a football game is about the longest we've waited to call Jabari's name this year. Yeah. Second down, quick little screen pass as well, and that's going to be a first down across midfield into Raven territory. Coffeyville's given a lot of cushion, and uh, Butler sees it and calls those screen plays. It's working for him. It was Nick Brown on the catch. 
You're right, Ravens are given that little five yard of cushion. Don't want to get beat over the top, but now they're getting beat on those little quick screen passes. And with the wind at the face of the quarterback, Murray, I don't know really why they're playing back. I yeah, don't just think the night like tonight, I think you just got to be like, man, press, press up. Press man, and, yeah. yeah. It, you, I mean, you've got the experienced, talented corners. I think you can trust them to do that. And, yeah, because right now, I mean, I don't know why they're not doing it more often. I'd be, I'd be dinking and dunking all over the place. Second down and ten after that pass went through the hands of the intended receiver. 5:03 to go, first quarter. Murray in the shotgun, running back to his right, inside zone, handoff up the middle, nowhere to go, and that's been the strength of the Raven defense all year. Their rushing defense, not just one of the best in the Jayhawk, Matt, one of the best in the nation. Yeah, and we knew that was strength on weakness. The Butler not able to run the football effectively. In a night like tonight, you really need a run game, and Coffeyville's fantastic at stopping the run. Third down and nine just across midfield at the Red Raven 48-yard line. Murray in the pistol, takes the snap, back to throw. Looking on an out route, and that is going to be caught up to about the 36-yard line. Perfect throw there. And the completion is made to the tight end, Julian Nixon. Great throw there by Tanner Murray. That's yeah, good job by Murray, hanging in the pocket, finding the open receiver for the first down. Butler into Raven territory. We saw Butler get down to about the 30-yard line on their last drive. See if the Ravens can come up with another stop. First down, pistol formation, two wide receivers on either side. Murray takes the snap and tucks the ball, and now he's going to be sacked by a pair of Ravens. Flag comes in late. Caden Ross in there again, as well as Jamani Johnson. Here. You're right, absolutely. Face mask against Jamani Johnson. Butler moving deep into Raven territory now. And See if they can come up with it. I'll tell you what, something I've noticed in this first quarter, for a night where the ball is wet and cold, the uh, Butler center is snapping it very fast. And I'm impressed Tanner Murray hasn't bobbled one yet. But maybe that's how he likes it. You, know, you we'll never see. know. Certain well, yeah, is it Jason Kelsey that snaps the ball too hard? Mm -hmm. Jalen Hurts has said he gets blisters from that. Handoff inside zone, and that's the best run of the night for Butler. Inside the 20, down to about the 16-yard line. That'll be a gain of about... Six yards. Jamani Johnson trying to make up for that face mask he's in on the tackle on that play. Coffeyville's defense is going to be asked to do a lot tonight with the way their offense has looked early in this one and the way this game is going. Second down. Murray, that one deflected down at the line. And is that Jamani Johnson again? My goodness. I'll tell you what, Matt. Three straight plays. Yeah, they I make mean, an impact. You're a... You're a grip of the face mask away from being a star of this game so far. A sack, a tackle, and then a pass batted down there. Third down and one here for the Butler Grizzlies from about the 17 yard line. Pistol formation and Butler, like you said, Matt, has struggled to run the football this year. We'll see if they try to do it here on third down and about the length of the football. Ravens showing big time blitz. They do hand it off, and they are just going to barely get it by about a yard. Ravens showing pressure. The uh, pressure came through one hole, but running back there was able to find, uh, McMillan was able to find the other hole to and pick I, up the first down. And I couldn't tell if that was a tight end or a moving tight end or a fullback in on that play, but they did pick up the block, the initial blitzer, and that allowed him to get just that two yard gain that moves the chains. The Ravens had about nine guys coming in on that play. First down, and a handoff. He broke a tackle, and he's down to about the 12-yard line. Finally driven back, and that'll be a gain of about three. Griffin Lampton, the player who made contact in the backfield, unable to wrap him up. Maybe on another night as we have a, some guys getting off the pile late, and we might have a Raven down. Raven down on the field. Let's take a 
Quick little 30-second timeout here in the booth. Ravens trying to get a defensive stop. We'll be back in 30 seconds on US 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network. Shopping and more. These helpful services are so reasonably priced, you can afford to pay for them yourself. In many cases, long-term care insurance or other sources provide assistance with the cost. Home is where the help is. Call Windsor Place at Home Care. Back here at the Veterans Memorial Stadium. It's no score late first quarter. Red Raven down on the play. And Matt, you see down in that huddle, a bunch of Ravens just jumping around there in that huddle. And uh, you think you think they're, uh, they're a little bit cold out there? I'd say, I, considering I'm sitting in, inside in the room. And you're a little cold. And I'm a little cold. Well... A lot of Florida kids on this team, and uh, they are not in Florida anymore. <laughs> there is there's a lot of kids from Texas, Florida. It is quite the difference, I'm sure, something they are not used to. Pretty heavy limp there by that Raven coming off the floor, or off the field. Already in basketball mode, I see. I am. Is that 23, Matt? It is 23 or 29. 29, that is Baru Kasabu, the freshman defensive back, and... He is not putting a whole lot of weight on that left leg, left ankle. What's here for a Raven coming off the field? They did get him to the sideline. So now we're ready for a first down. Butler walks up to the line. Clock is moving. 2.17 to go first quarter. And maybe another false start call against the Butler offensive line. Timeout. This one a timeout. Jeff Liker's taking two timeouts in the opening quarter. 2.17 to go first quarter. Ravens trying to get a red zone stop against the Butler Grizzlies. We're back in 60 seconds on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. Celebrate Paul with... Save $7 a bottle on Jim Beam Apple Whiskey and Fire Whiskey. Just $23.99 for a 1.75 bottle. Choose your favorite flavor, Rainbow, Onyx, Aurora, and Regular on 750's Crystal Head Assorted Vodkas. Only $53.99 to $62.99. Get Fireball 99 Flavors Trick or Treat Bags. 15 bottles in a cute bag for $13.89 plus tax. And save a dollar on Fireball 750's for $14.99. Celebrate fall at Gillum Liquor, 1713 West 8th Street in Coffeeville. Make your home more comforting with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local Derailed Commodity Flooring and Furniture, Brazelton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin in Butler, Missouri. Incomplete pass on 10 out of the timeout as Tanner Murray was looking to that front corner of the end zone on a little uh, out and go route, a little bit of a double move there, but well covered there by the Ravens. I believe that was Jabari Tiller in on that play that had the coverage and well blanketed it because that was the kind of route that would get open a lot of times. Yeah, those, those we have a roughing the passer call coming in late, very late call. They were lined up for second down. This drive is brought to you by... 15 yard penalties for Coffeyville. That's two on this drive. Yeah. This one will be half the distance down to about the eight. Are we taking another timeout? This first quarter's had everything, Matt. Let me tell you. It's been something. This is wild. D12 to go first quarter, and uh, I think we're in another timeout. I don't even know who called it. They never said who called it. I didn't it. see it. They didn't point. They didn't. Ladies and gentlemen, you might check your pockets right now. And you lost some keys. They will be located in the concession stand. Again, if you your lost keys? Some keys you uh, mine are over with Andrews. Access. Unless he lost my keys, then we're, I think I'm in good shape. I'm waiting for a thumbs up. They just All right, my keys are safe. No, I got mine. They just made the announcement over the air, or over the uh, uh, PA. I was going to say, there's some, uh, there's some post game dinner on the line for Shea, so uh, Andrew better not misplace those keys. Or else it's going to be a long, long walk yeah. in this weather. I'd give you a ride. <laughs> I think. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You, also, make, you make me walk the first little bit and laugh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of PA, former KGGF employee Tanner Glenn 
uh, PA for coffee. Games. Doing a great job. Yeah. I didn't know it was him until this week. Been the guy the whole season. What is going on here? I have no idea. Nobody called timeout, I, right? I, I guess someone What did. What is happening? Down there. Must have been Coffeeville. We've got like guys jumping and dancing on the side. I, I, this, this is oh, incredible. It's a review for targeting? It's a review. Okay. Ah. I don't know how we missed that. I don't think I didn't hear him say that either. I was gonna say. I'm still not quite. You know, this is year two of it. I'm still not quite used to the review process. Which, after they missed that touchdown uh, against Ellsworth. Yeah. I don't trust the review. Process. I was gonna say. I mean, at the Division One level, Matt, they've had a decade to perfect it, and they are the furthest thing from perfected. <laughs> Especially targeting. Targeting might be even more of a oh, parody yeah. than touchdown calls. You know, you overturn a touchdown, you're frustrated. But a targeting call, I mean, that's kicking a guy out of the game or not. Yeah. You still have a little bit to... Uh, break the record for longest quarter ever. I did a high school game uh, back in week six, Matt, that had a seven third quarter touchdowns, and that, that, that took about a, that was about a 55 minute quarter. It's about a 55 minute we quarter. Saw, I saw long, I saw some long quarters last night. I was going to say, there's like six minutes left when we hit the three hour mark of your game. Yeah, last night, when there's a hundred points scored in the game. The ball is However, the roughing the passer Stands. Half the okay, so the rough and the passer stands. Down. I guess they called targeting on the play Butler. and they reversed that. So oh, that's good. No targeting. There is roughing the passer. Generally, that's still. I mean, the, the penalty still stands. Um, well, they can't be perfect. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, listen, I didn't see enough of the me play. Me and today. officials have a long-standing history of not not seeing eye to eye. Longtime listeners of both KG, or KQQF and KUSN know this. Matt Jordan versus refs. Oh, it's a ongoing battle. First and goal from the six-yard line for the Butler Grizzlies. Tanner Murray in the shotgun looking for a quick throw over the middle. It is broken up. Back of the end zone and in on coverage there was Jaden Hamilton, the sophomore corner out of Wichita. That was blanketed very well by the Ravens secondary. This is, this is where Coffeyville thrives defensively. They've been a little bend but don't break in points this season, especially against better teams. Uh, but when you're condensed this close, Coffeyville's been very good. Second down and goal here from the six-yard line. Murray in the shotgun running back to his left. This time they do hand it off, trying to break a tackle. He will not. Ravens able to meet him. That'll be a loss of a yard or two. Run by number one. On the Kalen run by Shankle. Shankle, you're right, Kalen Shankel. So we've seen a split. For the most part this year, their, their lead back, Matt, has been Jay Sean McMillan, but we've seen quite a bit of uh, Shankle here in this first quarter. No, Shankle has more attempts this year. And McMillan's been the more successful. Yeah, uh, neither one yards. have been great. So third down and seven here. Third and goal from the seven. And they move to a pistol set. Murray takes the snap. Steps up. Pressure comes. Tanner Murray escapes. He'll try to do it himself. He's tripped up at about the four-yard line. Kyle Bryant came diving into that pile late. I was worried they were going to throw another flag. Murray has shown the ability to, to run when needed. He actually is this team's second leading rusher when it comes to attempts. And a hold against the Grizzlies. Well, and that's what Coach Liker was saying as well, Matt, is uh, Tanner Murray, he has the yardage, he has the touchdowns, but as you can see, his completion percentage is not the greatest. The efficiency has been hit or miss all season long, but where Tanner Murray can really make you pay is when he gets time and he can extend those plays and get outside of the pocket, like a lot of quarterbacks in this in this conference. I'd say Jeremiah Moore's probably the same way. You give him time to extend the play, and he's probably better. <laughs> Shotgun snap, or this will be a pistol snap, excuse me. Third and goal from the 17 now for Butler. Murray back to throw, looking for a quick out, incomplete. And now fourth down, this will be about a 34-yard field goal try if that's what the Grizzlies attempt. That's incomplete, That's... Lynn Johnson in a quarterback yeah. right now. Yeah. Good call. I don't know how neither one of us noticed that. I don't either. And I mean, I, I mean, we went into this game with even Coach Liker expecting to see. 
Johnson has not done a um, whole lot. Not a lot this season. Four, four attempts or seven attempts, four completions, 54 well, yards. On a night like tonight, he might not be getting those passing yards up much. This will be a field goal try. High snap, and it's blocked. Picked up. Returning it across the 25, breaking a tackle across the 30, up to about the 35-yard line. We said in the pregame, Matt, Ravens special teams needs to make a play. They block the kick and bring it back to the 35-yard line. Yeah, we, we knew that that was something that he needed to do. And uh, sure enough, they step up here. But a little bit of a, a, little bit of a, a lapse there with the not just scooping it up. Yeah, kind of waited a second. He did have a pretty nice return, though, to make up for it, but that was... The freshman Jaden Shepard that had the recovery. I wish I could tell you who had the block, but there's about eight hands in there. So. Maybe Andrew can tell us on the Red Raven Sports Network review angle. First down here, more under center. Ravens get the block kick, and we stay scoreless in this one. Handoff, fake the handoff, and now taking a shot down the field, and it is off the hands of Bonin. Considering the elements, considering the the uh, situation, that, uh, the, the I guess the conditions we're playing in tonight, that was a pretty good throw from Jeremiah Moore. Yeah, wind uh, in his favor for another 54 seconds. I'm not surprised they they lined up to take a shot there. Nearly converted and on just it. Just about had it. Second down and ten from the 35 yard line. Moore in the shotgun. Butler showing a little bit of pressure from the right side. Pitch to Wiggins. Wiggins out across the 40. Wiggins across midfield. 40, 35, and tripped up at about the 32-yard line. Big play, Amiri Wiggins. And he does it again for the Ravens. Made one man miss in the backfield and all of a sudden turned it into about a 33-yard gain. He's been that guy this year. He's the big play threat for Coffeyville. Hurry up to the line. And off again to Wiggins. This time a flag comes in and a false start. That's the risk you take when you hurry up to the line. You try to catch them off sides, but sometimes your guys move too. Oh, he had an opportunity to do the, uh, the Gene Steratore special there. False start, offense, everybody but the center. Clock is winding. First down and 15 for the Ravens from the 37-yard line. Probably the last snap of the quarter unless it's incomplete. What a wild first quarter we've had. Ravens in Butler territory following a big 33-yard run from Amiri Wiggins. First and 15. Moore in the shotgun. In motion, Speed Johnson. Five seconds. Get the snap off. Hand off Wiggins. Wiggins trying to go left. Gets a block. Wiggins inside the 35. Inside the 30. Pushes his way through. A tackle and out of bounds at the 25. A 12-yard run for Wiggins. And in two snaps, Matt, he gets about 45 yards to end the quarter. He's been, like I said, he's been that guy for us. Uh, when you need a, a big play, he, he did it against Highland at, at one point earlier this season. Yeah, the, three touchdowns against Indy. They did it against Indy. And Had another long touchdown to start the game last week. So, uh, third snap of the game, 75 yards to the house. First quarter in the books, no score. Ravens driving. They're at the 25 of the Grizzlies. We'll be back in 90 seconds on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. is proud to supply that tender care in Coffeyville. Skilled nursing services, rehabilitation, adult daycare, and much more are... 2921 West 1st in Coffeyville and learn more. Medical Lodges Coffeyville, where they serve and enhance the lives of others with caring hands. This is Meat Mountain, and up there on the summit awaits the all-new filet lay steak bowl from Taco Mayo. A heaping bowl filled with Mexican favorites and literally erupting with filet mignon. The filet lay steak bowl can be yours if you make it past Chuck Steak Canyon and the deadly sirloin abyss. Filet mignon beckons, my friend, on the meaty, mighty pinnacle of beefdom. The filet lay steak bowl from Taco Mayo. Welcome to Meat Mountain. Got a car? Maybe a motorcycle or even a boat.
rent or own your own home. If you have any of these, call NDB in Coffeeville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies so that they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeeville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. From the 29 yard line as we start the second quarter. I'm Shane Neal, Matt Jordan, alongside with me here on US 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network. Jeremiah Moore in the shotgun. Ravens at the 29 of Butler. Man in motion. Moore takes the snap. Toss outside. Azario Smith trying to get to the edge, trying to show a stiff arm and nice tackle there in open space by the Grizzlies. It'll be a gain of about two, but it'll still be fourth down and medium for the Ravens. Is this fourth and fourth down territory? Fourth I, th down territory? I think you go for it because now you have the wind in your face. Matt, I can't get over how good of a play that was by the Butler front seven because Rosario, if he got that stiff arm or if he had one or two more steps, he was 20 yards down the sideline, like we saw in the first quarter with Jeremiah Moore. So Butler's got some closing speed. We've seen it. Fourth down and five, Ravens. In the shotgun at the 27, they need to get to the 22. Jeremiah Moore takes the snap, back to throw. Butler showing pressure. Moore running for his life, steps up, stays alive. Moore throwing across his body, and it's broken up incomplete. That was a catch away from being one of the plays of the year. My goodness, Jeremiah Moore. I, I don't know how he didn't get sacked, but just brilliant effort to at least get rid of it. And getting rid of it bought the Raven defense about 15 yards. Well, the uh, Butler not burned by the blocked, blocked field goal, and now we've had a chance. four fumbles, a block kick, and we've had plenty of chances for both teams to get burned, and nobody has yet. So now Lynn Johnson out there in the pistol, first down. He went six of 12 in that opening quarter. Now looking for an out route. That's a high ball. It's caught but he's hit immediately after a gain of about three yards. Justin, Justin Stevens, Stevens with the catch. Jayden that was Jaden Hamilton with the tackle. We've called his name a couple times tonight. Second down, not a great snap. Nice catch by Johnson, got the pass off and down the sideline across the 40. First down there to That's Philip Caldwell. First down. We have not seen the Ravens really adjust to those quick screen passes yet. They're still playing back on those receivers, Matt. First down at the 38 as they say he went out prior to the 40 yard line. 12 and a half minutes to go first half. Johnson in the pistol again, takes the snap. This time they try to hand it off right side, gets a block, and he's up to about the 44, maybe the 45-yard line. It'll be a nice game of about six on first down. Run by number 10, Sean McMillan. That was McMillan. It's a good run by McMillan. Three straight drives now where we've seen Butler put some offense together, but just haven't been able to finish it, of course. Uh, turnover on downs. And then the block kick, and now we'll see if they can it's capitalize been, here. I was say, it's just been one of those games, but Butler uh, certainly has looked better than Coffeyville offensively tonight, uh, defensively as well. They've just they've looked better tonight in what's been an odd game. Johnson in the shotgun handoff here on second down, and Ravens able to limit that one to a minimal gain of maybe about a yard. It'll be third down and about three here for or maybe two, a pretty generous spot there. Third and two coming up for the Butler Grizzlies. But you said you said it, Matt, and I agree with you. Butler has looked like the better team, but Coffeeville looking at the scoreboard, still a tie game. Yeah, I was going to say 0-0. Zero, zero, so. Third down, so handoff. Matt. McMillan trying to edge his way forward. I don't know if he got there, Matt. We'll see yeah. if the extra push got him there. The gonna, offensive I think, line I was gonna say, I think they're going to give it to him. They're, they're right, yep. Yeah, they are. And there they do. So the extra effort from the offensive line, he did get there. Coffeeville stood him up initially. Sounds like our counterpart commentators are having some fun down there. Why don't we have fun, Matt? We do. Nah, you're right. This is a little too cold for fun. <laughs> it's a little too cold for fun. And we do have some fun coming up at halftime. Tony Turner joining us tonight to talk some Raven basketball. Johnson in the shotgun. Another handoff. 
And a nice cut there by McMillan turns a turns it into a five yard gain. Nice tackle there by the Ravens. That might have gone for a lot more than five. Another part of it is this student broadcast team. I, you know, I, oh, I, I, was I a had student. a blast. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I, right. I'm an adult and dead inside now. So, oh. you know, we don't have much. I don't have much fun anymore. That was dark, Matt. <laughs> Quick screen pass. This time the Ravens read it well. Into the backfield. Is that? I laughed when I said it. So. Yeah. Hey, you did. If you laugh hard enough, people can't hear you cry. <laughs> Jaden Hamilton again on that play. Or, excuse me, that was Kyler Christmas making the play. A lot of DBs that play for Jeff Laker. I, I still don't know why they don't just keep going to that screen game. Third and six here for Butler. Pistol snap. Back to throw, looking for an out route. That is almost intercepted. Had it in the bread basket. It was perfectly anticipated by Landon Barrett. And he would probably wouldn't have housed that because I think he was slipping into that catch, but it would have been a huge turnover. Yeah, no, he was definitely going down. He, but uh, that will bring the putt team out. Now they've got the wind at their back, so they should be able to put a, and that, a big and, punt on and this. And what we've seen, Matt, through 20 minutes, that could very well be the difference of a game. Fumble recovery touchdown or a pick six. Or a return touchdown. We'll see what Krishan Crenshaw can do here. Fourth and six, Butler showing punt. They do have the wind in their favor. Got it off. And it takes a pretty nice bounce. This will roll down to about the 10-yard line. The Ravens will have a long field. It's definitely a battle of field position in a game like Ravens this where it's defensive, no score, uh, elements aren't good. And right now, Butler is winning that battle. Collierville needs a big play or something, something to happen in their favor, whether that's a Butler penalty or, or what, but something to kind of flip this field position back into their favor. They officially mark it at the 11-yard line. Ravens will start first down and 10. Jeremiah Moore back out there for Coffeyville. What a win this would be for the Ravens to kind of officially show that, you know, the second half of the season is a different team. And obviously still a lot of work to do, but big opportunity here tonight for the Ravens. Moore under center. Butler showing a ton of pressure. It's a pitch right. Tries to cut it back to the middle, and he might have fought his way back to the line of scrimmage. That was Wiggins on the handoff. We see when Wiggins gets the ball, Matt, it's a lot of sweeps and tosses because they're trying to get him into open space because they know what he can do. Yeah, just uh, uh, getting him in open field, let him run downhill, see if he can't make something happen. Second down and 11 here for the Ravens at their own 10-yard line, and this is... Uh, you got to be careful at this part of the field. The wind's in your face. You got, you know, field position is very against you right now. This is a great opportunity for Butler to try and swing some momentum in their favor. Jeremiah in the shotgun, running back to his right. Man in motion, Speed Johnson. Takes the snap, looking to throw. Pressure comes. Jeremiah rolling left. Jeremiah switching back right and extending the play and finally goes down. Did that ball come out late? Props to Jeremiah for Standing trying to find somebody downfield, but at some point with his athleticism, he just needs to tuck it and go. Raven receivers have had a tough time getting open tonight. Third and 13 coming up for the Ravens from their own eight yard line. Coffeyville did fall on that fumble. Butler showing a lot of pressure here on third and 13. Moore, shotgun snap. Sweep right to Wiggins. Wiggins tries to cut back and might have got back to the line of scrimmage, but a three and out for the Ravens, and now they're going to have to be careful with this punt. I've already seen one punt attempt go awry. This one goes awry, and you're looking at at least two points. And it is Cade Dowd back in there for the Ravens, who has been the primary punter this year. He'll stand with his heels at the back of the end zone. And one of the things Coach Liker said is Cade's got to catch it and just get it out because Butler loves to block punts too. And I'm sure they'll be aggressive on this one. Snap, kick, he got it off, and they roughed him. That's a big hit. Cowd's, Dowd's taking two big hits tonight, Matt. And Poor guy, he's limping. No, he's fine. Uh, 
I, I thought he was limping at first, but then he said, and now oh, we, no, I'm good. A couple of times this year we've been saying running versus roughing. That one's got to be roughing, I did, right? I didn't see it. That I, I should have stayed with That was almost like a top. clean tackle on the punter. 15, 15 yard spot. penalty. First down. Penalty was on Jonathan Jordan, the freshman. Yeah, the difference between the two is about what leg is hit. If the kicking leg is hit, well, I think it's both running leg. into. I think if it's yeah. roughing, then that plant leg, because you're worried about injury in those moments. And if you just take him out fully, that's rough. I was going to say, I think a tackle, both legs are hit, on, that's 15. you full on take him out, then that's 15. That, now that would be the definition of roughing. Yeah. <laughs> Treated him like he was Amiri Wiggins on that play. Can't tackle the punt. First down, Ravens. That's the problem. When well, you can't aggressive. tackle the punter if he has the ball. Well, that's the problem when uh, you're overly aggressive. Sweep left. Wiggins trying to get to the edge, and Butler's run defense looks really good right now. Here's a solid run game. For Tom. Maybe about three yards. That was Xavier Parks. First time we've seen him tonight. He's been getting. We talked about that a little bit in the pregame, Matt. Uh, him and Trey Jones have both been getting a lot of reps in the last couple weeks. And Coach Liker likes uh, Xavier, and he's a true freshman out of Wichita. Yeah, Coach uh, Liker has gotten um, some, some real good contributions from Kansas or local kids this year. Second down and seven here for the Ravens. Moore takes the snap. Moore with a toss left, a lot of room to run. Can they get the block from the receiver? They do, and that's going to be a first down up to about the 39-yard line. Great play design there by the Ravens. He had a ton of space. The pitch plays hadn't worked at any point yet tonight, but that Man, time it maybe, did. And maybe all they needed was a fresh face back there. Xavier Parks comes in, a couple nice runs. It's important. You're figuring out this guy? Let's bring in a new guy, see if you can get him. Because, you know, every running back, every good running back has one or two things that they do a little bit different. Right. And, and Coach likes... Likes a, a diversity back there. Crenshaw in motion, first down Coffeyville. Moore rolling right, trying to buy some time, throw on the run. Hi, nice catch. That's Jaden Dozier into Butler territory, the tight end. Needed every single inch of that six foot five to go up and get that. No, that was, uh, that was the sedan That's kid. That's Breck Long. Oh, you're right, that was Breck out there. That was Breck Long. Good call. I like what I've seen from Breck. Several different Breck moments. needed every inch of that 6'4 to yeah, get up there. He went up there to get it. He good, looked 6'5 to me. <laughs> good hands by Breck Long. First down, empty backfield for Moore. Five wide receivers for the Ravens. And in motion, and it's a fake jet sweep. Jeremiah looks to take off. He's to about the 45 yard line, looking to get a push from his O line. And he did, and it might turn that two yard gain into about a four yard gain. Run by the quarterback number 19. And what a, this would be such a big drive for the Ravens if they can turn this into points, Matt, because they're burning a lot of clock in this second quarter. They get the ball to start the second half. If you can get this down to you know a minute or two left in the half and take the lead, what an advantage that would be. The way this game's going, one touchdown may be all you need. Ravens are starting to run the ball with a little bit more energy here on this drive. Second down and eight from the Grizzlies, 45 yard line. More in the shotgun. I believe that's Trey Jones. I think I see a four on that jersey. No, it's not, it's not Trey on that play, but it is a handoff. It's a gain of a yard. Run by number 22. That's the return of Wiggins. My eyes are having a tough night, man. Jeez, maybe I'm getting old. I got binoculars for you. Thank you. Do you want me to, you know, help you, help you out? You know, when when Coach Liker was playing two running backs, it was pretty easy to tell them apart. One had two digits on their jersey, and one had one digit on their jersey. Now sure? that there's four, it's a little harder. You should try to tell the difference when uh, on a Friday night. Yeah, no kid. Black jerseys for coffee. No kid. Well, I did say on Facebook today that you are a rock star. I appreciate. It. Moore takes the snap. Third down and seven. Pressure coming from Butler, trying to get it on a wheel route down the sideline. Incomplete. And no flag. A little bit of contact, no flag. I'm guessing they're calling that uncatchable. Yeah, I like the I like the no flag there. Both guys are kind of fighting for it. I don't think the the corner really impeded the the wide receiver from going back to get that. Both have rights to the football, so I, I like the no no flag there. I agree. And the Ravens now send out Dowd and now you know no points on that drive, but they do get the field position back. And we'll see where this punt goes. Fourth and seven from the 44. We'll see if Dowd can pin him inside the 10. We haven't seen a punt return yet, and that 
if one can break loose, that could be a, a big part of this game as well. Dow got that one off. It takes a Raven bounce, and this is a beautiful punt by Cade Dowd down to the eight-yard line. That's a way to flip field position because this drive started with Coffeyville standing in their own end zone, and now they've just about flipped it all the way back. You tackle the punter, and he's going to make you pay for it. How about that? Cade Dowd having a heck of a night here on homecoming night. He's punting the ball well, and he's showing, a, showing all the CCC football fans, hey, punters can take hits too. <laughs> he's taking two of them. Punters are people too. Pat McAfee would be proud. Big drive here for Butler as we wind out the last few minutes of the of the half. Can they find points before halftime? I'd love to see how aggressive they are here and what could be the final drive of the half, like you said. Johnson in the shotgun takes the snap. Hand off, and that's Shankle and did not get a ton there. Might have gotten a yard. Butler has two timeouts remaining. Coach Liker and the Ravens have just one. Caden Ross has been everywhere in this first half. He's in on another tackle there. He's a good player. Just a freshman as well. Looking for that quick little comeback, and that's incomplete. Another drop by Butler receivers in this first half. There's been a few. But even if he caught that ball, the Ravens did a nice job of meeting him as soon as he caught it. It was not going to get a ton of yardage. We remember from the old playground days how tough it is to catch a football in the cold oh. weather. And at my, at my school, Matt, here, third down and nine coming up here for Johnson. Takes the snap. Three wide receivers to the left. He's looking left, and that one high and incomplete. Now the Ravens get a chance to maybe it'll be a little aggressive here on special teams. But in my rule, in the Bellbrook school system growing up, if you played football outside at recess and you were playing wide receiver and you dropped two balls, you were not playing wide receiver anymore. Done, done yeah, the you, you, you were, for the rest of the game, you were uh, all-time all offensive line or something. They didn't play around in the Bellbrook playground. You had to, you had to have good hands. <laughs> Butler does have the benefit of uh, the wind at their back here. But you, uh, if you're Coffeeville, you can't be too aggressive. You don't want to do what Butler did. An interesting thing. Uh, so that snap is catchable, and Chevy Edwards got it up in the air. This is not a great punt if Crenshaw can catch it. And uh, now it's on the ground. No. Man, that's tough. That's just uh, and I, I mean, yeah. a lapse there by by Christian Crenshaw. It's a lapse, but I mean, you see why he did it because it was a not a great punt, and he saw the opportunity to try and get good field position. And then, of course, you know, with three, four guys in the area, you just don't take that chance. You either catch it on the fly or you don't touch it. That's that's. I think that's the you know the common rule. Well, and the fact that you know his body was going one way and the ball was going the other, right. I just. But Butler now has a great opportunity for points. Absolutely, they do. First down, Grizzlies here. Three ten to go. They are at midfield. Johnson, back to throw again. Johnson trying to step up. He tries to escape the pocket. Throws on the run down the field. And that's going to be pass interference against Cam Pearson. They caught him with his back turn. He's trying to argue yeah, that, that there's a push off. That's good. No, that's a, that's a good call. That's a good pass interference call. He was all over him. Now the question is, there's multiple flags. Is this going to be? I think it's just both or both pass interference. Cam Pearson's pretty adamant mm -hmm. that it was a push off. Is there a pass chance here that it's offsetting? Defense. It doesn't look like it. 15 yards from the previous slot, automatic first down. Yeah, I like the I like the call. Hey, I, I mean, think, I the, think that's a reasonable. With your back turned, you're always going to get called yeah. for that. And there, there was some grabbing of the jersey. I think that's that's a no doubt about it. First down, so first down, Butler, and now all of a sudden, after the Ravens got to stop at the ten yard line in two plays, Butler 35 yards away from potentially getting points. Clock is running under three minutes to go. I don't think the clock was supposed to be going, and now they stop it. Hand off and a gain of about two and a half. And that was McMillan. And McMillan, that ball bounced off his chest. He reached forward and grabbed hold of it before he lost it. That was a heads up play by hand to prevent the turnover. And a little bit of a lucky bounce, too. Two and a half to go, first half. No score. Butler trying to 
come away with points here at the end of the half. Second and eight from the Raven 33 yard line. Ravens move inside on the defensive line. Bad snap. Lynn Johnson smartly just dives on it. It'll be a big loss of about 10 yards, but smart play there by the backup quarterback. Not doing too much. Just, just get on the ball. Yeah, that was, sometimes you see a player try to try to pick that up, right. make Extend something happen. Play, no, no, but no. Yes. With the way this game's going, That's that, was, smart that play. was heads up play. Under two minutes to go now. Here in the half, third down and 18 now for Butler. Johnson in the shotgun. Back to throw, Johnson looking on that right side and nearly intercepted again. Couple Ravens and incomplete. Two Red Ravens had shots at that interception. Tiller was in on that play. I'm not sure if Tiller was one of the guys that got a hand on it. It was Tiller that was in on that play. The ball is bouncing all over the place. Man, I'll tell you what. That's why I'm telling you. I think the only touchdown of the game might be a you know a fumble that just bounces into the end zone and somebody falls on it. That's the kind of game we're playing here, Matt. This is not a Field Kinley Augusta out here tonight. No, it's not. This is quite a stark Tun distance. <laughs> Aaron Tunstall had six touchdowns by now. Yeah, he's not walking <laughs> through that door. RB5 for the Red Ravens <laughs> coming soon. As this is going to take a great Butler bounce down to about the six-yard line. And I'm sure we'll see. I don't think we'll see Coach Likerby, especially getting the ball to start the second half. I think we'll see a couple runs here and yeah. take your score. Nothing, you don't want anything to happen here, especially as close as you are to the end zone. But no doubt about and it. I saw 16 touchdowns scored last time. 16, and now you might not see one tonight. I don't know. You know, it'd be nice to spread it out of eight over two days, right? Yeah. I don't know, though. I mean, Aaron almost scored eight by himself. He is one heck of a football player, man. I don't even care if you're not a Field Kinley uh, fan. You just, uh, you, yeah, I feel like if you live in Southeast Kansas, you have to watch him play football. He's he's one of those guys that I'm, I'll, I'll probably never forget, you know, getting to call games for. Shotgun snap, handoff left, and a little bit of an end around here to Joseph Young. So Raven offense is getting a little aggressive. And I think he's down on the one-yard line. He was out of the end zone. What are, he got dead. what are we doing? I don't know about I don't, that. I don't know about that. that is, this is not the place or the time to be calling end around reverses. I mean, unless that was a you know the perfect call that goes for ninety six yards. I mean, that just looks like. And now Butler's going to take a timeout. That's smart. Yeah. That, what are we doing? Timeout. Butler. Fullback dive Butler with Breck Long. I, quarterback sneak. Just pick up some yards. Give yourself some breathing room. Butler can force Crazy. the coffee and punt here. He, and you've you've spoken to him a little more than I have, Matt, but not just what he's capable of on the football field, but Aaron Tunstall off the field, just outstanding, uh, outstanding young man. And, you know, just a guy that, you know, you see him on the field and you you like watching him play, but you, you talk to him off the field and you root for him. Yeah, you know, he's just one of, the, he's just one of those guys. He's a good kid. He's a hard worker. And uh, you, you can just really, really appreciate him. Comes from there his is, family. Will, Will yeah. of course, calls games with me. And yeah. It was just a pleasure to get to watch. I mean, I, I knew he was special last year. Suffers just a heartbreaking injury last season. Comes out, uh, you know, this year and just looks like. Um, one of the best running backs one, in the state. Yeah, one of the best running backs in the state. Uh, he's been the offense for Coffeeville week in and week out. And, uh, and I'm sure he's they sitting in an ice tub today. Yeah, but. they needed him every bit. Yeah. Uh, every bit. This is, yeah. This well, and, is, he's, and he's a perfect example of those athletes that, you know, there is there is such a thing as athletes that deserve the success. And he's one of those yeah. guys that deserves the success he has. And, of course, we're uh, very excited to watch him take on Wellington coming up next Friday over on Sunshine 98.9. Game that I'll, I'll have. They do run QB sneak with Jeremiah Moore, and he got about a yard. Another timeout. What a weird play call. I mean, <laughs> I disagree. I think it was the right play call. No, the end around. Oh, I'm the end th around. I'm still thinking yes. about that. The QB sneak yes. I'm fine with. Just don't get in the end zone. Oh, wow. 
Well, that's good for Garvinville. That'll Butler, give him some breathing. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, that, that offside saves the Ravens right there. Erases that uh, end around play. There you go. Apparently, uh, Jordan Montgomery is pitching a gem, right, a gem right now in the World Series. Yeah, I got home right in time after my exciting game to see the Rangers walk it off last night. Dolis Garcia is one heck of a player, ain't he? Yep. Snap, handoff, and they'll get a little bit of breathing room up to about the eight-yard line. Hang on to that football with two hands. Because this is the kind of game where one little loss could end up <laughs> deciding. Of course, Butler, Butler calls the another timeout here. Coming up at halftime, uh, Matt, uh, we're continuing our star-studded list of halftime guests here uh, on the Red Raven Sports Network and US 98. And, you know, basketball season starts in four days. Can you believe that? It, it, it seems crazy that we're deep into the 2023 as we are. And you know what else is crazy, Matt? The Lady Ravens, led by Tony Turner, who will be joining us here in just a few minutes, 18th in the country to start the season. And they deserve it. I was going to say, good for them. Well-deserved, for sure. Uh, they were picked way too low preseason. I completely in, agree. In the, in the Jayhawk Conference. I think everyone I've talked to, even the non coffeeville biased people, obviously, I think almost everyone agrees this is a top three team in the league. Yes. So, uh, and the, good to see the NJCAA reward them for it, uh, second highest ranked team in the conference in the national league. And it, it's fitting that we're talking to Coach Turner. You're talking to Coach Turner against Butler because Butler, another one of those teams, a great. And we'll see Butler come to Nellis Hall at the end of November. Yeah. So. A, a great girls basketball, women's basketball team. Led by maybe the best player in the league, Freddie Wallace. Third down and seven here for the Ravens. Jeremiah Moore under center. Another handoff here. They look to go left. And a stiff arm there from Amiri Wiggins. He's across the 10 up to about the 13-yard line. It'll be about three yards short of the first down. And I think now we'll just let that tick to the half. Well, Butler did have one more timeout left to dispose. So credit to Butler. I think they've managed this clock very well. They've put some pressure on Coffeyville. It would have been even better with not for the, the offsides penalty. Game yeah, no, if they didn't have the offsides penalty, we might be looking at a 2 nothing game. Thank you. I'll tell you what, I'm starting to get a little chilly here. Matt. I might have to go grab my jacket here for halftime. Andrew's got a hat on, and I'm jealous. I can't believe we hit November in four days. That's wild. It does. Like I said, it, it does feel... Halloween's on Tuesday. That hasn't sat yeah. with me yet. <laughs> what are you dressing up as? I don't know. I joked with uh, I joked with uh, some of the members of our staff and said I should go to the season opener on November 1st in a Halloween costume and wear a headset around my neck and say I'm going as a broadcaster for Halloween. That's good. Yeah, thank you. It'd be pretty easy, too. I wouldn't have to spend a ton of money on that. No, we got the equipment. And I have the press pass, so I can make it work. <laughs> I don't know. I used to, I had a really cool costume when I was in like 12, 13, 14 years old. It was a biker leather jacket with a zombie mask. And I was like a, like an undead, like a Knight Rider kind of thing. Huh. I, I wore that to like all the parties and it was so fun. Dowd just barely got that out. That's another penalty. Kate Dowd has taken a beating tonight, Matt. Butler player down on the field. Kate Dowd has gotten hit more than some running backs in this game. Poor Dowd. He's going he's gonna to You never think you're going to have tomorrow. to get an ice bath ready for a punter, yeah. but here we are. He's going to need it for more than one reason. I think he's going to see the field a lot tonight. He's already been hit three times. Running into the kicker. That'll make it a first down, and now just coffee looks kind of knee it to the half. Yeah, that's the, that's the running into, but they only needed four, so the five gives them a first down. Look at, look at the guys on the sideline clapping for Cade, man. I'll tell you what, he, he, needs, a, he needs a hug or something. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure if anyone came up to try and you know, put their hands out, he'd be like, don't, don't, don't hit me. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I, I don't think you overthink it here, Matt. Just tell Jeremiah, knee, uh, Jeremiah Moore to catch the ball and put his knee down. <laughs> Is that what you do here? Yeah, that's what I'm. Vic, this is well. It, I know Amiri Wiggins. Amiri Wiggins has. Yeah, it's right. not in this instance. Amiri Wiggins is a big play threat, but at this point, with the how the last five plays have gone, and yep, I think that's the right call. Jeremiah Moore takes a knee, and we have hit halftime in the vet. No score. Butler and Coffeyville homecoming weekend, and we've had a good one, a weird one so far. 
We're going to step away for, let's do three minutes. And uh, when we come back, we'll be joined by the Lady Raven head basketball coach, Tony Turner. We'll get ready for basketball season. It starts in less than a week. We're back in three minutes on US 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network. It's truck season at Roman Chevrolet. All 2023 Chevy Silverados qualify for 0% interest. No payments for 90 days and $1,000 cash allowance for qualified buyers. We have a great selection of Silverados and 2024 models are showing up daily. Roman Chevrolet will donate $5 to the American Cancer Society for every social media post shared. The goal is to donate $170,000. Test drive a new 2023 Chevy Silverado and check out the huge selection of pre-owned vehicles at Roman Chevrolet. 2313 West Main Independence. Your Silver. Colorado City. When you need to rely on a nursing facility for the care of a loved one, wouldn't it be comforting to know that the owner is providing the care? Owner Stephanie Bean with Medical Lodges is proud to supply that tender care in Coffeeville. Skilled nursing services, rehabilitation, adult daycare, and much more are all offered. Visit medicallodges.com or stop by 2921 West 1st in Coffeeville and learn more. Medical Lodges Coffeeville, where they serve and enhance the lives of others with caring hands. This is Community State Bank at work. This is Community State Bank at work. This is Community State Bank at work in our community. From kids' activities to school programs to funding home and business loans, every day Community State Bank is at work in our neighborhood. Whether you bank at Community State Bank or not, they're working for you every day. Community State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. I'm Mike Avey, and at Community State Bank, we believe in Coffeeville. You have a choice on where to go and who you want to be. Here at Coffeeville Community College, you can be you. We can make you workforce ready at one of our technical campuses, be a student athlete, join an honors program or an activity, have a voice with student government, and be involved with student life events. Our school believes in our red and white traditions, providing you with a quality education and preparing you for the next journey in life. Once you experience our campus, you know you've made the right choice. Let us help you make our story your story and become Raven proud if you could use a little help around the house Windsor Place at home care is the perfect solution for you their caregivers are prepared to help you with laundry meals housekeeping shopping and more these helpful services are so reasonably priced you can afford to pay for them yourself in many cases long-term care insurance or other sources provide assistance with the cost home is where the help is call Windsor Place at home care 800-982-1866. Red Raven Halftime Show presented by Community Bank in a weird first half that is scoreless here at the Vet. And of course, we have plenty to talk about each week with Coach Liker and his staff on the Red Raven Coaches Show, which you can catch live at Gigi's Burger Bar on Wednesdays at 6 o'clock. We appreciate them for hosting us every week. And I'm sure we already have plenty to talk about what has been a very weird first half so far. Hopefully the Ravens can come out with a win on homecoming weekend but speaking of things going on this week in coffee though we couldn't be more excited about red raven basketball season and we're joined by lady raven Re lady raven head coach tony turner season opener four days away and coach i know you're uh you're starting to feel like a kid on christmas morning getting ready for the season opener huh oh yes it's just right around the corner i uh, mean it's I, I can't get here fast enough no doubt about it and your uh, your team got some great news uh, last week being ranked in the national top 25 to start the season and we'll get into that but of course i want to talk about we talked about it a little bit at the end of the year 
Uh, but your run to the championship game against the Barton Cougars, and we talked all season, and you said it was a young team that was going to gel as the year went on, and, I mean, they gelled perfectly for that region tournament, knocking off Hutch, knocking off Dodge, and, of course, giving Barton everything they could handle in that championship game. So uh, you get some of those players back, and we'll get into that here in just a little bit. But seeing the growth of that team as the year has gone on has to excite you about what they can accomplish this year. You know, that's this, this current team we have, you know, they, they learned from some – some really good sophomores last year that learned our system, knew how to play our style of basketball. And so I just knew it was just going to be a matter of time before they uh, finally figured it out. And, and, and we made the run at the right time. And it was it was remarkable. I, I always knew they had a chance and, and, and had all the, the tools and it was just getting it all put together. And I thought we – we did a pretty good job putting it all together. No doubt about it. And, Coach, uh, you know, we have uh, – you've told me how much you like the talent on this team. Uh, but, of course, uh, two of the players are going to be looking to replace this season, at least replace their production. Uh, were your top two forwards last year, Cheyenne Banks and Jordan Connor. Uh, what are some of the early plans for trying to replace that production? And, obviously, uh, we know what Jordan and Shy did for this team, but uh, – how you plan to approach, you know, having to take the floor without them this year? Well, you know, their names constantly get brought up in, in our current practices about, I need a Jordan, I need a Jordan, a, per, a player that's going to go get us some extra buckets, uh, you know, just a, a leader out there, knows all the positions, going to bail you out when you get broke down. And, you know, Cheyenne, just her physicalness and, and the things that she did and uh, at Forest. And, but I, I'm constantly every day in practice, I need a Cheyenne, I need a Jordan. And, you know, and, you know, I know you mentioned those two, but that whole that that sophomore class we had last year, they they went through the grind and they learned how to play our style and 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 man, it it was just it was it was fun coaching that crew and and it's going to be tough to replace that whole crew and and because they were all classy kids and they bought into our system and and you know it's it's so, but this team is. We're starting to jail the way we started, the way we jailed last year. Yeah, and I know another player from that team, uh, Kennedy Roach. Uh, she's uh, set to do some big things at Missouri Southern this year. So, uh, another player to keep an eye on as uh, she continues her career. But you mentioned uh, some returners from that team last year, and of course the big three being Tatana Woods, Blackout, Kylie Ortiz, Bailey Lehman. Uh, how how much of an advantage do you feel it is for you in a conference that has so much turnover every year? to get three crucial guards back, including your starting point guard, where it feels like, you know, uh, some teams are learning a new offense, learning how to, you know, bring in new, a new point guard to run the offense, and you really could just hit the ground running with your returning guards. You know, those three have been just been great for us so far during the during this season, especially with the, the, you know, the scrimmages we've had. And, you know, they just come out and they work hard. They set the tone and practice. Uh, you know, we're still working on them to be a little more vocal, and they're doing a much better job this year of being vocal. But when anytime you can have three solid guards that we have returning, that 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 helps out a lot. Um, you know, sometimes I have to catch myself like I, we'll get too advanced and we'll start calling plays and things from last year and them, them uh, new girls and the new players and, and the freshmen are like, what is that? You know, and and so I have for me as a coach and our coaching staff, we just got to slow down a little bit and say, no, we got to reteach to everybody but you know back to those three guards they're, they're they're remarkable and they're fun to coach absolutely another player that i think uh is very interesting to me is jordan snyder another returner you have and uh you know she had a lot of ups and downs like a lot of freshmen do her first year with the team but i think she really played her best basketball in the postseason especially in wichita i thought her last two games of the year she was very very good so what what are you expecting from jordan snyder this year and uh how much of an impact do you think she'll play to this group? You know, oh Jordan, I, I ride Jordan quite a bit because she she's a very talented player, and 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 we 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 our team will, is very successful when she's all in because she's a very talented player. She can do a lot of different things. She can shoot. She can pass. She can play defense, block shots, rebound. She she, she kind of has the whole package, and you know, so we we ride her pretty hard to try to hope to keep her from from uh, stay. I always say stay out of your own way. Stay out of your own way and don't let little mistakes keep keep get you down and, and you're know, trying to get her to play through that you know she'll miss a shot and she'll get her head down but I'm like play through that play through that go get a defensive stop for us go get a block shot go get a rebound and she's doing a much better job this year of, of, of buying all in and, and you know she did learn again back to Cheyenne and, and Jordan she learned a lot from them so it, it's the, the light the light bulbs coming on <laughs> 
No doubt about it. And coach, uh, you know, uh, of course, I know you. Uh, and we'll get into your fr- your incoming freshman here in just a second. But I know you believe in everybody on this team. They wouldn't be playing for your your group if you didn't believe in the talent that they brought to the court. But you went into the transfer portal and you got a couple players that are new with the team this year. And Ivy Fox, of course, as well as uh, J. Maya Lyons, uh, a conference uh, opponent from Garden City last year, uh, also winning. Uh, also went out and got a, a couple others as well. So my co- my thought is course uh you know it's not a secret that you got your three key guards back and this was uh, coming into this year a lot of people viewed this team as a championship contender so maybe seeing that opportunity to strike while you have a chance to be one of the top two or three teams in this league were you maybe a little more aggressive with getting some experienced players to help fill out this roster you know we, we had to replace Cheyenne okay so and Jordan and Kennedy and McKenzie and, and we went out and found some of our recruiting strategies were what are some of the things that we struggled at with last year and you know with Jordan is as talented as she was she didn't shoot the ball very well so we had to go out and find a a forward that can shoot um Cheyenne you know she's gonna be tough to replace so we we went out and found uh three Cheyennes to to, to replace one Cheyenne and uh but no we did I think we 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 did really really well and and finding three really good transfer portal kids that are very talented that are buying into what we got going on and it, it's they're gonna once we all start clicking and they click and they understand we well, should be pretty solid and like i said coach i know that uh you wouldn't have recruited them and they wouldn't be on this roster if you didn't like what they brought to the table but just sitting here a couple of days before the first game of the year who are some of these incoming freshmen that you really like and that we should keep a close eye on to maybe for a potentially instant impact with this team you know um karis washington's been solid for her. she's a she's another she's she's a younger version of jordan who can play numerous positions we play at the point we play at the four we play at the three a very talented strong body kid um does a good job for us very good basketball iq you know we have ava baker who's a shooter uh a young and you know we we've had our individual meetings she's like i just love learning from bailey and kylie and i'm just learning a lot and they've been good mentors for her and um Who's my other? Uh, Lexus Parker, solid post kid, young freshman, solid though, big physical kid that's processing things right now. But once she, once the light comes on, she's gonna help us a lot because she she can move. She's got good IQ, but just still learning the system. Great teammate, does a lot of good things, and um, hope I'm not forgetting any of the freshmen. I think we have three that are solid for us. Well, and it's a, it's a you know it's a big advantage to be able to feel like any single player on this roster can contribute right away you don't have anybody that's maybe you know a project piece or a developmental piece you have a pl- you have a team full of players that can go out and play when they need to play and I think that's a that's a big advantage for you as a coach but we're continuing our conversation with Lady Raven head coach Tony Turner let's take a quick three minute break when we come back we'll get ready for the season opener on Wednesday it's the Red Raven halftime show on US 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network Aurora and regular on 750's Crystal Head Assorted Podcasts, only $53.99 to $62.99. Get Fireball 99 Flavors Trick or Treat Bags, 15 bottles in a cute bag for $13.89 plus tax, and save a dollar on Fireball 750's for $14.99. Celebrate fall at Gillum Liquor, 1713 West 8th Street in Coffeyville. Make your home more comforting with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local Derailed Commodity Flooring and Furniture, Brazelton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin in Butler, Missouri. Taco Mayo's new filet ole steak bowl is piled high with fillet mignon. It's filet mignon. A heaping bowl loaded with refried beans, Mexicali rice, cheddar jack, sour cream, and tender filet mignon. It's filet mignon. Filet mignon. A filet mignon. Filet mignon. Filet mignon. Savor the juicy filet ole steak bowl stacked with filet mignon and only from Taco Mayo. That's a wrap. No, that's a bowl. 
Got a car? Maybe a motorcycle or even a boat? Do you rent or own your own home? If you have any of these, call NDB in Coffeeville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies so that they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeeville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. When you choose Coffeyville Regional Medical Center, our dedicated team of surgeons, anesthesia, nurses, and other medical professionals are focused on you and your health. Our board-certified general surgeons provide expert surgical care close to home. From a routine colonoscopy to a life-saving mastectomy, the general surgeons at CRMC are equipped to handle many types of surgical procedures. For more information, call CRMC Medical Group at 620-252-1639. It's truck season at Roman Chevrolet. All 2023 Chevy Silverados qualify for 0% interest. No payments for 90 days and $1,000 cash allowance for qualified buyers. We have a great selection of Silverados and 2024 models are showing up daily. Roman Chevrolet will donate $5 to the American Cancer Society for every social media post shared. The goal is to donate $170,000. Test drive a new 2023 Chevy Silverado and check out the huge selection of pre-owned vehicles at Roman Chevrolet. 2313 West Main Independence. Your Silverado City. Red Ravens by zero at the half in a cold and rainy night in Coffeeville. I'm Shay Neal, Red Raven Halftime Show. We continue our conversation with Lady Raven head coach Tony Turner. And coach, you're about to enter your fifth year as the Lady Raven head coach here in Coffeeville. Of course, you've had a couple other stops, Independence, uh, along the way in your coaching career. So now entering your fifth season, what has been your favorite part about coaching Coffeeville? You know, the fan support. You know, this is an athletic campus, an athletic atmosphere. The town is an athletic atmosphere. And, you know, just the people, man, it, it's been just rewarding. And, you know, and then also I have a really good coaching staff that just I just enjoy. They make my job fun. And uh, the people here make my job fun. It's just been, I can go on and on and on just about just how this town is with their athletics absolutely I, c I couldn't agree more and coach i'm curious because uh we were talking about it a little bit earlier but preseason njcaa polls come out your team comes in at number 18 which i think is well deserved with how they ended the year last year but at no point last year was your team ranked and had that number next to their name so i'm curious your thoughts on how you plan how you and your group plan on kind of balancing the enjoying the part of that where you know you you deserve to be one of the more hyped up teams in the conference and around the nation at this level but at the same time not letting that number next to your team name get in your head and make sure you still handle business on the court you know i've, I've had plenty of teams that's ranked as high as number two in the country and throughout my career and and i just tell my team now i said you got a bullseye on your back anytime you have a number beside you you got a bigger bullseye on your back and you know we can take it a couple different ways we can we can protect that number and come out and play hard and battle or we can get big headed and come out and get popped and and i'm constantly in practice saying what's going to happen when you get popped everybody the, the opposing fans are going to be like overrated you know and 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 so i i try to keep them humble with that part and you know one of my assistants like hey y'all got a number on your on your back he's gonna coach his team like it's a, like you have a number on his back so beware team and and i have picked up the intensity because i don't want these young student athletes to fall into a fact as though we're, not, we're ranked and people are going to be afraid of you i need them to understand that when you have a number beside you they're going to come after you you're going to get everybody's best shot no doubt about it and coach something that i think uh is a little comparable to the, your team from last year to this year is I'm a Cincinnati Bengals fan, born and raised in Southern Ohio, and the Bengals went on that run to the Super Bowl with Joe Burrow in his second season, and since then it's been a lot tougher to get there going up against Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs, and the line I used is you only get one shot to sneak up on people. You snuck up on people in the region tournament, but now people know Coffeyville's going to be there. Oh, they're coming. I, I already know. I mean, you know, even in these scrimmages, people are there watching us and like just trying to already start to get their game plans against us. And, you know, we kept it pretty generic just because we do have some – we have different lineups that we can put out there, and so we just kind of kept our scrimmages pretty generic this year and not showing much, but I think this team has a very legitimate chance of making a, a major run if we don't get in our own way. And, you, I, and you got into my final question, Coach. Appreciate your time, and that is my question. I know we're going to learn a lot here in these next couple of weeks, the first time they're on the court in meaningful games, uh, but what you've seen in practice, what you've seen with these kids during recruiting, 
what is the ceiling in your eyes for this group? You know, we want to make a run. Somebody wrote on my wrote on, wrote on my board early in the year, uh, Casper, Wyoming, where the national tournament is, and and circled it and put all kinds of lines around it. Just to, you know, that's our focus, man. We want to get there, and and I tell them, it don't start later, it starts now. And everybody's clicking now. Everybody's on the same page. Everybody's buying in. Everybody's all in, and that's been our focus this so far this year. And you know, we start Wednesday. We'll see. I mean, you know, Labette will come in there and battle against Labette, and we'll see if we're all in, and we'll go out and play hard. Lady Ravens get their season started on Wednesday at Nellis Hall against Labette County. Coach, thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it. We can't wait for Wednesday. I appreciate you. You do a great job, man. You're one of the best out there, man. Keep doing your thing, and I, I appreciate your support and all the things you do, man. I, I'm, I'm very impressed with what you do. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. It means a lot coming from you. Let's step away for 60 seconds. Second half action coming up next from Labette on the U.S. 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network. When you need I thought only those big out-of-town banks had that fancy stuff. Are you sure you did it right? Yes, Donna. I received an alert from Community State Bank telling me it was deposited. Alert! What did you do now? No, Donna. It was an alert I signed up for letting me know when a deposit is made. I also signed up for a low balance alert on our account and when our home loan payment is posted. Wow! That's some pretty fancy stuff from Community State Bank. Yes, Donna, pretty fancy stuff. But I can still walk right through the door or I can call and talk to a real banker when I want to. You're so smart for banking at Community State Bank, Ralph. I love you. Make your life easier with mobile banking from Community State Bank. Member FDIC. I love you too, Donna. Mary Wiggins gets the handoff, loses about a yard on first down. As we get the second half started, I'm Shane Neal. Matt Jordan back with me in the saddle. And appreciate talking to Tony Turner at the half. Always a great, I mean, great coach. But, I mean, I'm impressed with how good of an interview he is. I've oh, never had a bad interview no, with Tony that's, Turner. That's the, great, that's the great thing about a lot of the coaches here at, at Coffeeville, and especially the ones we've had on, you know, Dearden, Coach Herkelman, Coach Turner, Coach Liker on Wednesdays. All great interviews. Yep. No doubt about it. Second down and 11 here for the Ravens. Jeremiah Moore in the shotgun takes the snap. Takes the handoff. QB keeper. Jeremiah Moore. Big hole. Stays on his feet. Fighting his way up to the first down marker. And it's going to be close to a first down. We'll see where they spot him. Big play by Moore to make this third manageable here. I'll tell you what, Matt. He got through that that uh, wall of offensive linemen, and it looked like he was shot out of a cannon. He has running back speed at the quarterback position. He's talked about it multiple times, season, but the added threat that he brings at the quarterback position with his ability to take off and run. And they hurry up to the line. Moore tries to jump over the pile. It depends where they spot the football. I think I saw his helmet get to the 35-yard line, but it depends on the football. Butler thinks they got the stop, but I think he got the first down. Forget the tush push. That's just the leap. We got the Red Raven flight. The Raven here. flight. There the you Raven go. Flight. Jalen Hurts ain't got nothing on Jeremiah Moore. <laughs> and it is a coffee though first down. Did not get it by much, but he got it. And that might he might have gotten it by the nose of the football, Matt. I mean, most of that football is behind the 35. Did exactly what he needed to do. That's a tough kid, too, being willing to jump in the air and take a hit. First down snap, Moore. Handoff left, broken tackle. And a nice gain for Trey. A nice gain for the Ravens still going into Butler territory to about the 46. That run had so much part of it and that the official almost got in on the tackle. And that might be the, I mean, Cade Dowd might be the candidate for player of the game with the hits he's taken and the punts he's had. But close second, I think, is Xavier Parks. That was another great run by the freshman. Parks is looking good. Although I think you're in trouble if your punter's the player of the game. Uh, no I'm offense to Cade Dowd. Maybe the tough player of the game. Yeah. I don't know. 
I hope Coach Liker teach, uh, tells his receivers and running backs that's how you take a hit. <laughs> <laughs> First down here for the Ravens in Butler territory at the 46. Man in motion is Joseph Young. It's a keeper for Jeremiah Moore. He gets to the right side. Jeremiah Moore, big gain. Flag comes in late. Moore's inside the 35 with a first down, but it may be a flag coming back against the Ravens. That's tough. Those penalties that erase big plays, those are game changers. In a game like this where every little thing is going to stack on each other. And it almost it's interesting to see that. That, you know, 20-minute stretch inside the, you know, heated locker rooms, Matt, and it looks like the Ravens have come out ju juiced up. We've seen Xavier Parks and Jeremiah Moore just running the ball with a lot of energy. They look, I mean, they look quick. They look strong. They're finishing runs. I mean, this is exciting and encouraging if you're Coach Liker in the Raven offense. It's a hold from the spot, so it's only going to back them up. So it'll be about first and seven or eight. Yeah. That's always the weirdest play in football for me when they do like first and seven. Well, it's going to be like 17 instead well, of the full 20. Yeah. But yes, I know what you're talking about. You'll see like first well, and eight. If it's a first hold yeah. past the first down yeah. marker, right. So now first down and 17 for the Ravens at their own 47. More back to throw. Looking for a quick comebacker. That is caught. That's Baylor Nash up to about the 41 yard line. The South Coffeeville kid gets about a 13 yard chunk on first down. And Matt, we saw him at calf time kicking. A little bit. Yeah, big big play by uh, Nash to make that uh, second and a lot more manageable. I bet he enjoys, you know, going home. I, you know, for coming from somebody that now lives 12 hours away from home, I'm jealous of the fact that he's about 12 minutes away yeah. from home. Didn't didn't uh, play football, high school football, too far from here. South Coffeeville Lion, not too far down the road. Jeremiah Moore in the pistol. He switches Wiggins to cool. the right side of him. Takes the snap. And that's uh, Xavier Parks again. Parks fights his way forward to about the 40. Call it a gain of about two. That was Wiggins. Are we sure? Because Wiggins is walking back to the huddle. That was Parks. That was Parks, okay. I was going to say, I double-checked uh, that one before that I said he had it. But yeah, Wiggins came in just now. Well, they had both of them in on that play, but they, had, they switched sides, and I double-checked because I was <laughs> curious, too. Uh, but Parks, that's just hit. That's what he's been doing all night, Matt. He gets hit at the line, and he falls forward for two yards, making something out of nothing. Third down and four here for the Ravens of the Butler 40. Jeremiah Moore in the shotgun, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, tries to take off, and this time Butler was ready for it. No gain. He might have lost a yard. And again, Matt, that's a guy that's had a huge night for this Butler defense, number 16, Demarcius Robinson. You know how football players, some football players just have those names where you know not to mess with them. Yeah. The Brickishaw Fergusons, your guys like that. Uh, Bam Bam Cam Chancellor. Uh, I, I don't know if I'd mess with a guy named Demartius. No, that's a strong football name, and he's, he's living up to it. He's living up to it. It also doesn't, uh, I also wouldn't mess with him because he's, you know, much bigger than I well, am. Yeah. So that's another part of it. Ravens back to punt. They get it off. We'll see if they can get a friendly bounce. And not a great bounce there. It'll be down at about the 18-yard line. Punt still inside the 20s big in anything flip and field position. And Right now, both these teams have been able to get drives started, but they have not been able to finish a drive. Butler got the closest with a field goal attempt, but that was blocked. And uh, just this game, this game is one of the weirder ones we've seen. In a game like this, like you know at some point, if this keeps going, someone's got to score. What it really struck me as interesting, Matt, Lynn Johnson, who's not the normal starter for this Butler team, he threw 19 passes in the first half. Handoff here up the middle. Nice little hole opens up, and they're out to about the 25. Ravens finally drive them back. It'll be a gain of about seven. It's 12 more than he'd thrown all season. Came into this game 4-7 for 54 yards well, and a touchdown. And that's, uh, you know, that's another cold take by Shea because Shea at the beginning of the game said he's probably not going to get to add too much to that in a game like tonight. But now they're, they're running a little bit of an air raid offense here. They have taken some shots. Now they've got set up uh, on this side of the field to be able to take some shots. Second down and three for Butler. Another handoff, and this time the Ravens read it well. Nothing there, and that's Griffin Lampton that was back there for Coffeyville making the hit immediately. The uh, the wind in this game is a little interesting because... That's blowing like to the side. Well, if you look over here, I mean, the flag is 
I, as I point on radio uh, <laughs> for our radio listeners. The flag is moving like crazy, but the flag on the goalpost on the near side is not doing a lot. Swirling winds, Matt Jordan. That one tipped. Was it picked off? It was. Ravens get a takeaway off the ricochet, intercepted by Jaden Hamilton. And, Matt, that's a guy that has been a rotational piece this year, but we've called his name quite a bit tonight, and he makes a big play there. A lot of uh, tipped balls, balls bouncing around tonight that haven't been brought in, but finally Coffeyville gets their interception that they've been looking for, been close on multiple plays, and now are set up in good field position for the first points of the game. And I know no score, it really doesn't mean a whole lot, but you mentioned in the first half that Butler looked like the, you know, the better team for a good portion of that first half, playing harder, finishing plays. I think the switch is flipped in the second half. I think Coffeyville looks stronger in the second half. So far early in it, yes. Moore tries to keep, breaks one tackle. Jeremiah Moore looking for a room to run. He lost the football. And a pile for it. I think Butler's got it. Spoke a little too soon. Butler. Jeremiah Moore just couldn't hang on to it. I think Butler recovered. They did. They did. That got punched from behind. Moore was trying to shake a defender and it got peanut punched from behind tribute to charles tillman just doing a little too much with yeah. it was more that time he's been shaking and baking a little bit too much sometimes he just has to turn up the field and go so interception to so a fumble we're now to what five fumbles and an interception there's today been, yeah there's a lot of turnovers not all the fumbles have been lost I hope uh, Steph, sitting back in the studio, hasn't fallen asleep listening to this game. Well, you know, I that's mean, there's the enough action. Well, I was going to say, asleep. like, you know, you look at the zero-zero game and think, kind of, yeah, a little, a little boring. But that the way the craziness that this game's been, like, there's been, uh, there's been plenty of back and forth. No one's found the end zone though. Lynn Johnson first down. He takes a quarterback draw and got about a yard. I was curious to see what they would do after that interception. That interception really wasn't his fault. It was off the receiver's hands. And those are the you know, those are the worst kinds of interceptions for quarterbacks where you put it on the receiver's hands and it's ricocheted and picked off. I mean, that's negative for your stats, but what did you do wrong? Uh, okay, so that that was not Lynn Johnson. So we have another quarterback change that, here. The, it's forty six. So this is like a wildcat formation, huh? But he throws it there, and that's caught for a gain of about seven. And you're right. That is 46. That is This is Mason, Mason Ross, Ross, who's listed as a tight end on the roster. So is this like a trick package here for Butler? That, or he's their emergency quarterback. I mean, he likes little not too trick if he's out there slinging the rock on you're his right. second play. You're right. I wonder if the uh, – well, he th throws the interception, maybe trying to do something different here. That was his first pass attempt of the season. I'd assume tight ends don't throw too many. That one's on the ground. He recovers. He's tackled for a loss. Now, see, he did the anti-Lynn Johnson. He scooped it and tried to go, and that's the tight end in him, Matt. Yeah, yes, it is the playmaker. This, is, this game has it all. It does. But outside of points. Wh the where, else, thing it's lacking. where else are you going to find a tight end playing quarterback and five fumbles than on the Red Raven Sports Network? Yeah, this, Let me tell this you. Game, this game has it all. We've got the weather, the wind, the elements. We've got miscues. We've got fumbles. We've got Tony Turner at halftime. Punters taking hits. This, this game has had everything. Emergency quarterbacks. That one nearly blocked. Got a hand in there. And Crenshaw lets it go. And it'll take a great Butler bounce down to about the nine-yard line. 6.24 to go, third quarter. Coffee go back out there. We really haven't had time to take too many breaks today, at least in the action. No. I mean, it's been a lot of shifting back and forth and back and forth. Normally I say uh, let's take breaks after scores. Well, Matt, it's hard to take breaks after scores when there's no scoring. There's no scoring. But Butler does a good job flipping field position. That, that continues to be the battle that is waging on. You think Coach Liker has Aaron Tunstall's number? <laughs> Who says 16 is too young to play college football? After what we saw last night, he might be ready. <laughs> First down Ravens at their own 10-yard line. Moore takes the snap. Hand off to Amiri Wiggins, and he's got nowhere to go. Butler might be wanting to make that call, too. Yeah, no kidding. Might be a lot of teams in the Jayhawk making that call and hoping he goes to that level. 
because he might be a he might be a couple levels higher when it's all said and uh, done. There has been some you know, Division One interest in a few Coffeyville players, and one of those uh, Division Ones that are interested uh, allegedly uh, has a lot of really good running backs. Yes. <laughs> RBU in the Big 12, if you will. Second down and 15 after a big loss of five. Ravens just trying to get out of their own end zone. It's a keeper for Jeremiah Moore. Lowers the helmet and maybe got about three. Man, I just feel like Coffeyville is... Flag comes in late, Matt. One missed tackle away from taking one. They've had some holes that have been there that have closed. Credit to the Butler defense in closing those quickly, but I feel like there's been a few runs that are just a tackle away from going. Flag after the play was over. Who was the extracurricular on? I don't know if the teams know who it was on. Ravens do appear to be backing up. backing up. I mean, it's only half the distance if it's against them. Coach Liger does exactly what uh, Coach Herkelman does. And if a player gets called for a technical foul or an unsportsmanlike conduct, instantly taken out. That's uh, Michi Joseph, freshman for Coffeyville. I think they probably run the ball here and set up another punt. Yeah, you got to think. A little interesting that they're even lined up in the shotgun here. And they're going four wide with a running back. Butler showing blitz. More steps up, trying to fire down the seam. And that, did it come out on the ground? Did they? They're ruling a catch. They are. That's a first down, too. And that's Crenshaw. Crenshaw. That's a big play. Butler, Butler claiming, Butler's adamant that was incomplete. That's a that's a, a gutsy play call by, by Coach Liker. Butler is screaming that that is incomplete. And Butler, you know, Matt. They can challenge. They can challenge, and I think they are going to challenge. Butler's secondary was, for, was screaming that pass came out. And Butler, you know, they have a little bit of experience of uh, having uh, official calls not go their way. Last week against uh, uh, Iowa Western, they were on the 10-yard line trying to tie the game up, and then a pass that uh, they ruled an interception by Iowa Western clearly hit the ground on review, and they, oh, no. they said the call stands. That's what I mean. I, I don't trust the review process. I, I've not seen it uh, go the right way too many well, that's times. The, that's the first thing I thought of when those Butler DBs were just screaming at the sideline. I'm like, well, they, you know, they, they had one go against them last week, and they're trying to make sure that doesn't happen again here. Heck of a throw by Jeremiah Moore, though, up the seam. We'll see what they, uh, they call. But you're right about the gutsy call. Well, you know, we talked about the weather this one. Colorado State and Air Force are in the middle of a snowstorm. Oh. So much that uh, Colorado State fans got an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty for throwing snowballs at the Air Force bench. I respect that. I, you know, maybe against other teams, but you, you can't do that to the troops. That's true. You can't do you that know, to the Air, the Air, not Force, to the Air Force cadets. You know, like, respect the troops. That's a good point. You know, if, you know, if was, he did that against Wyoming, yeah, whatever. I mean, they should have done that against Colorado. No. Hit Coach Prime with a there snowball. Was a, there was enough going on in that game. They didn't need <laughs> snowballs. Hit Coach Prime with a snowball. <laughs> but, yeah, so we just think, the weather's not great here. It could be worse. You see Coach Prime jump over the bench, climb into the stands, and yell, Give me my theme music! <laughs> so, ruling on the field was a catch. Yes. Uh, that's got to go. That's a big part of this. Yes, what, because what we, the we, the call field. stands is their favorite thing to say. Yes. Yeah, especially at this level. Would you say in the order of likelihood it stands overturned, confirmed? I think confirmed is what we hear the least. Yeah, confirmed generally means that like they got the evidence. That confirmed says, means that whoever challenged it was just not smart. Yeah, and stands is generally uh, just hey, now this is the. Uh, and then it overturned. could have been either overturned way. It happens, yeah, right. but it's not. It's not too often. And who else? Uh, who else? But uh, they're in the tent down there. It looks like. Oh, they're marking some time. Which means incomplete, maybe. 
if they're checking no, time. No, no, the we'll see. The white hat comes out. Well, I guess they were lined up, right? And the clock started running. So I guess that could that could mean that it's still coming out. Let's see what the official ruling is now. Again, the play on the field was a catch for a first down. The ruling on the field of a completed catch stands. Stands. First down, Coffeyville. Look at the Butler secondary, Matt. This is the second week in a row where they feel like they've been robbed. Let's see if I can find my own replay review here. Using, of course, the camera angles of the Red Raven Sports Network. Yes. Now, against Ellsworth, our camera angle said that O'Meary Wiggins was in, but the officials didn't care. No. That's what I I am checking. So it's first down Ravens at the 23. Jeremiah just got that off. Four forty nine to go, third quarter. We'll wait to start the clock. We don't have I don't know how many angles they have. We don't really have one. But we uh, the angle that we have, he definitely catches that football. But I can't tell if after that the butler player gets in the way. I can't tell if it's squeezed through or well, not. Well that might be why they said stands, Matt. First down and 10 here, and now we still have commotion here between the officials and the Butler sideline, Matt. What's here for your Red Ravens? And now we're ready to roll. First down, Coffeyville at the 23-yard line. Clock will start, 4.49 to go, third quarter. Jeremiah Moore takes the snap, rolling right, looking for time. Now tries to accelerate. Throw on the run is high and out of bounds, incomplete. So after after uh, your official review, would you say stands as well? Yeah, it's I, I don't have enough. It wasn't enough to see, so I'd have to say stands as well. There you go. Our official rules correspondent, Matt Jordan. You're the new uh, Gene Steratore of our broadcast. Yeah, I do both. With a look at, uh, you know, what we're, we're unsure what happened on that play, Matt. I don't know. I thought he caught it. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Sometimes that's about what they, they add, Gene yeah. Steratore and... Uh, they used to be Al Riverton. I can't remember who the other guy is for the other network. Dean Blandino, thank you. Keeper by Jeremiah Moore. He's across the 35, up to about the 36-yard line. It'll be about third and two here for the Red Ravens. Excuse me, that was to the 31. The third and two coming up for Coffeyville. Third and short, good run by Moore, set up a third manageable. <laughs> I don't know why I laughed so hard at that. Joseph Young went to go pick something up and he missed it. And almost fell down it's, trying to pick yeah, it up. It's not good when the hands aren't looking great on one of your better wide receivers. Right, yeah. Late timeout call. Timeout Ravens, third and two coming up, late third quarter. Let's step away for 60 seconds. No score here in Coffeyville. Ravens and Butler Grizzlies in a battle. We'll be back in 60 seconds on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. providing you with a quality education and preparing you for the next journey in life. Once you experience our campus, you know you've made the right choice. Let us help you make our story your story and become Raven Proud. If you could use a little help around the house, Windsor Place at Home Care is the perfect solution for you. Their caregivers are prepared to help you with laundry, meals, housekeeping, shopping, and more. These helpful services are so reasonably priced, you can afford to pay for them yourself. In many cases, 
Long-term care insurance or other sources provide assistance with the cost. Home is where the help is. Call Windsor Place at Home Care, 800-982-1866. Thirty-two for the Red Ravens here with 3.53 to go in the third quarter. Jeremiah Moore, keeper on the read option and battling his way forward. It's going to be close. I think he got it. It's close. Right at the line. Depends on the spot here. That was Wiggins on the handoff. And, that's good. and it is a first down. So read option with Wiggins and Moore. They decide to hand off to Wiggins and he gets just enough to move the chains. They even start at their own 33 yard line. Moore in the shotgun. Takes the snap. This time he does keep it, trying to get outside to the right side. Jeremiah Moore off to the races inside the 35, 30, 20, and he's tracked down at about the 16-yard line. Jeremiah Moore on by far the biggest play of the night puts the Ravens in the red zone. I knew we were just one missed tackle or broken tackle away from breaking a big one, and Moore just about takes it the distance. But we'll see. Coffeyville has not been able to finish a drive tonight. Let's see if they can knock it in for the first quarter. Ravens in the red zone. Huge game by Jeremiah Moore. Officially a 51-yard run. Joseph Young in motion. Flag comes in. Ball start against 76, that's Antonio Caballero, and worth noting, that's the uh, re replacement for uh, Mitchie Joseph, who uh, of course got the unsportsmanlike conduct. First and 15 from see, the 21. That's not what you want to see after a big play. No. Moore again lines up in the shotgun, sends Young in motion. This time a clean snap, Moore running right, sets the feet, now buying time. Moore running out of time, gets the throw off, it is caught! Did it come out late? It did not! Touchdown, Ravens! Jeremiah Moore extends the play just enough. And it's a touchdown to Joseph Young. Coffeeville strikes first. What a play by Moore and... Joseph Young. Young ran his own route there after the play broke down a bit and heads up by Moore to find him. What a throw. Off balance, about 12 yards beyond the original line of scrimmage. Drive stayed alive thanks to the third and long play by Crenshaw. Extra point try. Not a given on a night like this. Gallander gets it up, and he missed it. Minute 53 to go, third quarter. Somebody finally breaks through on the scoreboard. 51-yard run for Jeremiah Moore. And just a, pl a two plays later, a 21-yard touchdown to Joseph Young. Coffeyville on the board first, 6 nothing. We're back in 60 seconds on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. and save a dollar on Fireball 750s for $14.99. Celebrate fall at Gillum Liquor, 1713 West State Street in Coffeyville. Make your home more comforting with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local Derailed Commodity Flooring and Furniture, Brazelton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin and Butler, Missouri. Ravens after Jeremiah Moore found Joseph Young for the 21-yard touchdown. I'm Shane Neal, Matt Jordan alongside with me. Matt, 
worth noting on that kickoff that uh, Connor Gellander and the Ravens tried a sky kick there, which was uh, fair caught at about the 38-yard line by Butler. Yeah, I just think when you're kicking with the wind like it is, that's probably one of the better options that you're going to see. And, you know, if, if something happens, it bounces the wrong way, maybe you recover. First down snap. That's Lynn Johnson back in the game. The catch is made. It's a gain of about three as he fights forward. And there was the quarterback from the last drive in on that play as well, <laughs> number 46, Mason Ross. When I uh, checked that catch on the YouTube, in, on YouTube, I did notice in the comment sections that someone said, throw over the middle is dropped. He had room to work in a costly <laughs> drop there. Russell Wilkie was the intended receiver. But uh, as I was saying, someone said in the comment section, it's Lynn Nicholas Johnson. Or Lynn Nichols Johnson. Lynn Nichols Johnson. Lynn okay. Nichols Johnson. Not listed as that in. I was going to say, that's not, yeah, that's yeah. the roster so, we were given just says Johnson. So we will refer to him as Nichols Johnson the rest of the way. And now Nichols Johnson back to throw, taking a shot down the sideline and incomplete. Might have been a little bit of a push off anyway by the receiver. That was intended for Nick Brown. That last drop on the play right before that. That is tough. That receiver was wide open. That's a, Those are drive killers and exactly what happened after getting the ball in pretty good field position after giving up the first touchdown of the game. So fourth down and six. Ravens will send Krishan Crenshaw out as the return man, although we have not seen Krishan take a single return yet tonight. And I don't know if we'll see one here with the wind helping out the Butler Grizzlies here. Six-nothing Ravens. Final 75 seconds of the third quarter. Got the kick off. It is over the head of Crenshaw. Bounces up in the air. And it bounces down at the seven-yard line. Big Pretty fans of Crenshaw up here in the box. I uh, I think I heard from the sideline someone yell uh, for him to, to get away. Uh, from is that the, what you heard? I think, I think I heard someone saying down there, they said something as, as that ball was Crenshaw. Uh, Crenshaw was running back for that ball. I heard somebody say, I think they were telling him to get away because they don't want what happened earlier yeah. in this game to happen that, that deep in your own territory. Absolutely not. Jeremiah Moore back out there. Ravens now lead at 6-0 here with a minute four to go in the third quarter. Ravens line up under center. Matt, that's Connor Oppo in at quarterback. So we're having quarterback changes on both sides tonight. I wonder if... Did Jeremiah take, take a hit after the he throw? He didn't take a hit after the touchdown. We'll see. I'll look down there for him, see if I see him. It was a three-yard run there on first down by the Ravens. We've now, we've now seen three quarterbacks and a tight end tonight. Well, and Play the, quarterback the original position. quarterback we you know we game planned for we were told about for Butler isn't playing didn't play. So now Connor Oppo in the shotgun here for the Ravens. He looked good against Kansas Wesleyan last week, and that's a bad snap. Oppo picks it up, gets out of the end zone. Now throws on the run, and that's picked off at the twenty-five yard line. Oppo. Recovered the bad snap. But maybe tried to do a little bit too much there in the interception on that play by Armand Hale. I was just about to say, Oppo, smart. You know, we talked about just falling on the football. That's not one of those instances where you want to do that. Right. But you got to throw that. If that play's broken. You let be counter blessings that they didn't recover the fumble. You just got to toss that out of bounds. Butler with a great opportunity. Look at this, Matt, down on the Raven bench. He's got an offensive lineman down there with a blanket and a sweater on now. You see, are you seeing what I'm I, seeing? I saw that. That's how cold it is. End of the quarter here. Ravens lead at 6-0, but a chance for Butler to respond after an interception by Armand Hale. So far, the only points through three quarters. A 21-yard touchdown from Jeremiah Moore to Joseph Young. We'll see if Coffeyville can hold on to their one-score lead. 
we head to the fourth quarter on homecoming night. We're back in 60 seconds on US 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network. Filled with Mexican favorites and literally erupting with filet mignon. The filet ole steak bowl can be yours. If you make it past Chuck Steak Canyon and the deadly sirloin abyss. Filet mignon beckons, my friend, on the meaty, mighty pinnacle of beefdom. The filet ole steak bowl from Taco Mayo. Welcome to Meat Mountain. Got a car? Maybe a motorcycle or even a boat. Do you rent or own your own home? If you have any of these, call NDB in Coffeeville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies so that they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeeville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. Matt, if there was ever a good time for an interception, that last play of the third quarter, because now Butler has the wind in their face as they start at the Raven 23-yard line, second down and seven here. Shotgun snap. Nichols Johnson back to throw, took a hit, throw down the sideline, incomplete. Great Kate. effort by the wide receiver to try to come back to that. Caden Ross with the pressure for the Ravens. Caden Ross has just gotten better and better as the year's gone on. He was pretty good at the start of the year. Really getting down to the final moments of this game. And Coffeyville's defense trying to keep them in the lead. Butler trying to answer. They would love to spoil homecoming. Third down and seven. Nichols Johnson back to throw. Ravens show blitz. Throw over the middle. A lot of contact and a flag comes in late. Yeah, that's, uh, I was just about to say pass interference inbound. Intended for Julian Nixon. The only argument I think that, you know, the only, or I guess the only defense that the Ravens could have had was there was contact both ways, but definitely more so on Coffeyville's side. Yeah, no, that was definitely, there was pass interference. He, yeah. the defender impeded the receiver for making that catch. So this will keep the drive alive for the Grizzlies. Pass interference, That's on. Jaden Shepard. So now first down and goal here for Butler from the eight-yard line. 14.51 to go in this one. Penalties have definitely favored the Grizzlies. Nichols Johnson inside zone handoff and down to about the five-yard line goes. Kaylin Shankle. And I don't say that to say that this is a one-sided game being called official, officially. No, Ravens I have say made that, more mistakes. Yeah, as, as the Ravens have made more mistakes, yes. It's a, that's not a negative thing at Butler. They've, they've definitely... They've been the more disciplined team yeah. for sure. Second down and goal from the five-yard line after the three-yard run by Shankle. Nichols Johnson in the shotgun takes the snap. Tried to set up a bubble screen. Now they go back to the left side and incomplete. That was Jabari Tiller in coverage. So they they designed like a bubble screen coming on that right side, and I don't know if he it wasn't designed to look that way or if he just looked left faster, but, I mean, I thought there was some yardage there on that bubble screen. Screens have worked for the most part tonight. Oh, scoreboard just went out. Well, that's not good. There we go. Quick recovery. Third down and goal. Nichols Johnson back to throw. Looking for a fade to the back corner of the end zone. Oh, Flag oh, comes oh, in. Man. That was Patterson in coverage. He fell. I, I've, I've, listen, I've, I've agreed with just about all the calls and no calls. That one I do not agree with. Patterson's furious. Patterson was claiming he was pulled down. Yeah, I, that looked like both of them just got tied up with each other. That moves Butler inside the five. Yeah, that one, I, like I said, I've agreed with almost all their calls tonight. That one I do not agree with. First and goal from the two-yard line now for Butler. 14-11 to go. Ravens lead it 6 to nothing. Nichols Johnson takes the snap. Ravens show blitz. 
Shankle trying to power his way in. He's kept out. Gain of about a half a yard. So the Ravens make a stand on first down and goal. But asking the defense to prevent two yards in four plays is a pretty tall task. Second down and goal from the two. Butler awaits the call from the sideline. Now walks up to the line. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Nichols Johnson, shotgun snap. Hand off right, Shankle gets to the edge and he's in. Touchdown Grizzlies and Butler on the board. Thanks to a couple costly pass interference calls against Coffeyville and now a potential extra point can give the Grizzlies the lead, but of course with the wind, you know, you never know. It's not a given tonight, as we saw with uh, Connor Gellander missing his. From the, at the same part of the field. Jabari Tiller was a little upset there, thought he was held as he was trying to get to the outside, but no call. And a chance to take the lead for Butler. Flag comes in. I think this is going to be on. I think that's going to be jumping over yeah. the snapper or whatever that penalty is now. You can't, Contact. Use, you can't use the offensive linemen to boost yourself. You can jump over the line, but you can't use them to boost yourself, as we learned from Miles Garrett last week. I believe that's the call, because I did see somebody go up in the air, and I'm guessing that they used the snapper. Yeah, I can't make contact with the snapper. Clearly you can make contact with the punter. We've learned that tonight. So the penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Which is big because they're going to be kicking into the wind, but they'll get an extra 15 yards to kind of play with with the wind. So well, they'll kick off in the 50. Yeah, you think Coffeyville. I mean, unless Butler tries a unorthodox kind of kick. You'd think Coffeyville would just kind of plan for that going through the end zone. But we saw Coffeyville try the sky kick earlier. Maybe Butler tries something similar. Well, an, an onside kick that you don't recover isn't the worst thing here either based upon where the field position is. For people watching the game wanting to know about the World Series, Merrill Kelly just went through his seventh inning. Only one run allowed, no walks, nine strikeouts. Yeah, that one run was a solo shot. By Mitch Garver. Garve sauce, as some people know him. But it looks like Arizona, if they can get the last six outs, might be tying up the World Series. I think we're just going to have a classic series in that. They just feel like very ma evenly matched teams. Butler kicking off from the 50, leading it 7-6, to 13-27 to go. Line drive, and that, yeah, that's going through the back of the end zone pretty easily. Ravens will start at their own 25. I feel big plays two drives ago that got them the touchdown. No Jeremiah Moore. Looks like again as Connor Oppo comes out. Oppo coming back out of the field after throwing the interception. I'm just wondering. I'm trying to think back on what might have happened to Jeremiah. Maybe on the run when he was tracked down from behind. Did he fall on like a shoulder or something like that? Looked good enough to make a sh take a shot. Well, maybe it was on that shot that he realized something was up. It's not Oppo. It's Tedesco. It's We've used Tedesco. all three now. Enzo Tedesco, the former Independence Pirate. Hand off Ravens up the middle, trying to fight for yardage. It'll be a gain of about two. So we've had four quarterbacks and a tight end today play the quarterback position. Now that's something that I did not expect on the bingo card. Tedesco coming into this game 15 to 36, one touchdown, two interceptions, 71 yards. Played the entire game against Independence. Played quite a bit against Wesleyan last week, too. Especially in that second half. 7-6, Butler leads, 12-51 to go. Second down and eight here for the Ravens from their own 27. Shotgun snap, Butler shows blitz off the right side. Tedesco running, trying to buy time. Tedesco sheds the first tackler, throws on the run, and that's intercepted. So Jeremiah Moore, for whatever reason, unavailable late in this game. And now we've seen both quarterbacks, Oppo and Tedesco, throw costly interceptions here in the second half. This, the way this game has gone has been very 
symbolic of how this season has gone. Coffeyville, competitive. They look good when Jeremiah Moore is the quarterback. If someone else is in at quarterback, something seems Just to hasn't go clicked. wrong. It hasn't clicked. And you look at two interceptions. In a span of the, about three snaps. From those two other quarterbacks. And that's just that's just why the season has gone awry like it has and why this game looks like it's headed in the, in the wrong direction. Shotgun snap. Nichols Johnson handoff to McMillan. That'll be a gain of about three. Caden Ross in on the tackle. Excuse me, that was 51 on the tackle, Jordan May. And not only with, uh, with the quarterback situation, Matt, but also more penalties tonight for the Ravens, and that's been another big problem this year. Here's another handoff. This one, the Ravens read well. McMillan going nowhere, lost a couple yards. So that's been another issue for the Ravens, though, is undisciplined football that puts them in bad positions. And Butler's touchdown that has the lead right now is because of two pass interference calls. Yeah, there's been, uh, been an issue with that this season, which is not like a Jeff Liker coach team. Third down and nine coming up. Clock continues to run down to about 11.33 to go in this football game. Shotgun snap, Nichols Johnson back to throw, stepping up, pressure comes and he's dropped. Landon Barrett and got a little help from Aiden Dark. They team up for the sack. So Raven defense on that possession at least, helping out the offense after the turnover. Coffeyville's still right in this despite the mistakes. Down by and, just one point. And now we'll see what, what does Coach Liker do at quarterback. If Jeremiah Moore's unavailable, what do you what do you roll with here, Matt? I'm not sure, to be honest. Of the two, I like Oppo better than Tedesco. I've just seen more of him this year. That's a good punt for Butler. It's going to roll inside the five and be down at about the two-yard line all the way back Man, to the one. Punt. The punters today have been... Very good for yeah, both they, these teams. Yeah, they have. And that's the punt of the night. Down inside. Line. It will be Tedesco. QB sneak here, maybe because Tedesco is the bigger quarterback. Is that, is that something that went into that, do you think? He's there. I mean, he's standing in the end zone. <laughs> this is on the two-inch line. First down, Ravens. High formation for Coffeyville. Butler showing a ton of pressure, as they should, and they're going to get some yardage. That's going to help across the 15-yard line. Wiggins took a late hit as well, and the flags come out. Wiggins got rocked after he went out of bounds. And now Butler called for a little bit of extracurricular. That'll be big for Coffeyville. 15 tacked onto the big run. That's the kind of, of momentum they need. He's the, and he's the, I'll tell you what, man. Another big play for the Ravens and another big play from Amiri Wiggins. That flag on number 20 for the Grizzlies. That's Ashton Levels. That's good for The Ravens now in one play go from the 1 to the 31. 10.25 to go in this football game. First down, Coffeyville. Enzo Tedesco under center. Jeremiah Moore, for whatever reason, not available in this football game right now. Tedesco takes the snap. Hand off. Wiggins again. Another nice run. A gain of about four. Took a big hit at the end of that. Nice job to hang on to it. I'm going to pull up the YouTube and go back to that touchdown Coffeyville score to see if I can see. And look, I would be curious if you, if you can't find anything on that given play. The run he had down to about the 15-yard line. 
He was tracked down from behind, and I'm curious how he landed on that shoulder. Because he fell on his left shoulder, I think. Second down and six here for the Ravens. Shotgun snap for Tedesco. Another run play for the Ravens, and they're up to about the 38-yard line. It's a gain of about two and a half. It'll be third down and three. Matt, I mean, this I don't want this to sound like a knock on Osario Smith because I think he's been very solid for the Ravens this season. But we went into the season expecting Osario Smith to be the lead back, and there's no question who the lead back is. And it's not because Osario's played poorly. That's just how good Amiri Wiggins has been. Yeah, I think he's been kind of the, the surprise for Coffeyville this season. Third down and four coming up for the Ravens. And now I think we see on this play how much uh, how much does Coach Liker trust Enzo Tedesco. Hand off, and it's not going anywhere. I believe that was Breck Long on the handoff. Lost a couple yards. Fourth down and seven coming up for the Ravens, and they'll send out down. You seen anything on that? He did take a shot as he threw that football. Oh yeah, he did. They get the punt off. That's Dowd with the kick. It's Caught at about the 30. That's the first return punt of the game, Matt. It got about four yards. So you are you are you are correct. After seeing that replay, replay, Jeremiah Moore definitely did take a shot on that touchdown throw. Not sure if that's a you know what they're investigating. If I'm sure one of the things they're investigating is concussion potentially. But with a hit that late, uh, it looks like he fell awkwardly on his shoulder. And if, but the, it was the non-throwing shoulder. So, hand off and a nice run there for Shankle. Call it a gain of about five. Clock continues to run. About seven and a half minutes to go in this one. Butler leads it seven to six. Butler looking for their fifth win of the year. Red Ravens trying to end homecoming weekend with a big time win at home and get their third win of the year. Nichols Johnson in the shotgun. Second and five. Takes the snap. Quick throw to the right side and the Ravens pursuit very well. That's going to lose a yard or two. And after the Ravens got burnt with that a lot in the first half, Matt, they were ready for that one. Third down coming up. Coffeyville's defense is going to have to do something to try to either get them in a really good field position or score themselves. Sure, sure seems like a Jabari Tiller pick six would come in handy yep. here, huh? Third down and six here for Butler. 6.37 to go. Lynn Johnson, or, excuse me, Nichols Johnson takes the snap. And that pass incomplete. It's intended for number one, Schenkel. That'll force a punt that was into the wind. That was Landon Barrett in coverage for the Ravens. Landon Barrett's really emerged as a quality linebacker for this yeah, team. One of the better, one of the better players that, you know, there's a list of guys that we talked about preseason. He was not mentioned, but He's definitely made a name for himself. Good to see some uh, Red Raven fans starting to move around in the stands and get people fired up. 6.34 to go. Snap is clean. The kick is off. And another nice punt that'll take a Butler bounce. This one not quite as good as the last one, but this My one will goodness. roll inside the 15-yard line. And we've got some shoving here at the end of the play. No flag comes out. Raven hit the deck. Some weird, way away from the ball 
pushing and shoving. But I, what I a weapon this punter is. Yeah, no doubt about it. I've never seen a – I mean, it's rare. I, I probably have seen it. I won't say I'm nev I've never seen it. I've, it's rare that I see a play where a player knocks a player to the ground and no laundry. Yeah, I that's think, what we I saw. Think the I mean, he, he was, sold it a little he bit. He sold it. Yeah. I think in the official standing right there, I think, I think he noticed that. There were still a solid three or four shoves there, and I'm surprised that they didn't, you know, pounce on that. They let them go. Ravens start at their own 13-yard line. And Wiggins trying to get to the edge there, and he does not. It might be a loss of a yard. And, Matt, you're sitting here with about six minutes to go, and the Ravens, of course, need a big play to try and get in position to win this football game. And without Jeremiah Moore out there, it really – doesn't feel like that big play is available to you unless it comes via Amiri Wiggins. Well, and here's the thing. Uh, the Butler defense knows that you're going to try to do something on the ground because they, they, you know, they don't, you don't trust Tedesco. And so that is uh, making them, it, you know, anticipate the run. Second down. Another run play. This one's going to have a little bit of room to run. Across the 25, across the 30, Amiri Wiggins up to about the 33-yard line. He is one heck of a player. That's, I mean, that's what you're going to have to have happen. Either some play is going to have to break loose for a, a, a big touchdown or a defensive score. I just don't know if this Kyville offense has long, sustained drive in them. Injury timeout as there's a Butler Grizzly a little slow getting up. 5.15 to go in this football game. Ravens have a first down at their own 33, trailing 7-6. to six. And, you know, we talked about how turnovers would loom large in this game and how um, punts potentially could loom large in this game. What we really didn't consider is a missed extra point, which is the difference in this game. Yeah, that is the difference. That's uh, been an issue. We flash back to week one, extra points and field goals. That was the difference in that game against Highland. Highland gave uh, gave Hutch a little run today. They only lost by 13 points. They're a sneaky good team. That Highland team, uh, if you don't prepare for that Highland team, they will punch you for it. That is a tough team. That's a perfect example of a team that uh, took being ranked in last place in the conference personally. First down snap for the Ravens. Butler show blitz. Run play and back to the line of scrimmage, no gain. I think they've got themselves good coach in Mayo as well. Yeah, I agree. Does the uh, KJCCC do a coach of the year? Uh, yeah, they do. Well, Hi Highland might be the favorite, but Coach Mayo should get some consideration, I think. Got another injury. That's a... Uh, and that's a big that's a big player that's down for Butler, uh, Matt. That's number four, Yudoka Eziani, and that's their leading tackler, the linebacker. Obviously, we hope he's okay, but that could be a potentially noteworthy injury there. Because Eziani has seven more tackles than anyone else on the Butler defense. Yeah, he, him and... Ravens taking this opportunity, obviously, is a little bit of a additional timeout. Second and nine, they gave Wiggins a one-yard run. Eziani, Eziani gets help off the field, but he is walking off under his own power. Good sign. Clock is running for the Ravens. Second and a nine, 4.43 to go in this football game. I'm sure if you're coffee villain, you can manipulate this clock. I'm sure Coach Liker would love to run this all the way out. But how much do you trust the kicker at this point, Matt? Yeah, uh, how close do you feel like you need to, to get? Baylor Nash in motion. Second down snap. Another run play, trying to get to the edge. Trying to stop on a dime. Spinning, took a big hit to Wiggins, but he got about three yards. 
Great example of Butler's speed that time because it looked like there was room to the outside, but they closed that quickly. Third down and about six coming up for Coffeyville. We're going to go under four minutes to go in this game. Ravens only down a point, but are missing their young freshman quarterback, Jeremiah Moore. Third down and six. Baylor Nash out wide to the top of the field. Two wide receivers down to the right of Tedesco. Enzo takes the shotgun snap. Now sends Joseph Young in motion. And it's a keeper for Tedesco. Tedesco gets some room to run. Enzo Tedesco breaks free down the sideline. Enzo Tedesco all the way. Touchdown. Ravens on top. Tedesco goes the distance. And Matt, we talked about it on the last drive. How much do you trust Enzo Tedesco? Apparently still enough for him to make the play of the night. Tedesco does it with his feet. We saw him do that in his game against Independence. And I've been saying a big play was just this close for breaking free, and that's exactly what you needed. Ravens will go for two, obviously, to try and take a seven-point lead. And Enzo Tedesco also had some good runs against Wesleyan last week. So that's slowly becoming, or quickly, I should say, becoming a big part of his game. And if... Jeremiah Moore can't play, of course, in these final two games of the year. That's the kind of play that makes Coach Liker and this coaching staff be like, you know what, maybe it's time for a second chance with Enzo Tedesco. Well, and we talked about uh, Tedesco's uh, speed and athleticism a, a big part. Oh. Flag comes in. That wasn't a delay of game. There were still some seconds on the clock. Illegal substitution. Oh, that's tough. So now they'll have to go eight yards for the two-point conversion. Makes the two-point a lot harder. So but but Tedesco's athleticism, a big part of why Coach Liker chose to go with him in that Independence game. And, and I'm sure why he chose him over Oppo in this game. And not just the speed and athleticism, Matt, but the strength. He broke a couple tackles to get out into the clear. Could have very easily been tripped up and held, kept short of the first down marker. And then once he got out into the open field, Matt, he outran a couple cornerbacks to yeah, the end we, zone. I mean, we saw Jeremiah Moore get caught from behind. Tedesco was not getting caught. We talk about Jeremiah Moore's speed, but Enzo Tedesco in that same category. Two-point conversion from the eight-yard line for the Ravens, leading 12-7. to seven. Tedesco in the shotgun. And another flag comes in, and this is a delay of game. How do you get a delay game after a – man, that's tough. And Coach Liker is fuming. Three and a half minutes to go, and we're still – you know, we haven't run a play since the Tedesco touchdown run, and it feels like that was five minutes ago, Matt. Now, how, how often do you see a 13-yard two-point conversion? Not very often. And even less do you see one converted. Yeah, I wouldn't bet the success rate is very high on these. Man in motion. There's Tedesco takes the snap. Play action. Tedesco looking for going back the other way and incomplete. So Butler keeps the Ravens from taking a seven-point lead. But Enzo Tedesco... 64 yards to the house. The backup quarterback gives the Ravens the lead. 12-7 with three and a half to go. Can the defense get the stop? We'll find out. We're back in 60 seconds on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. Visit our website, crmcinc.org.
It's truck season at Roman Chevrolet. All 2023 Chevy Silverados qualify for 0% interest. No payments for 90 days and $1,000 cash allowance for qualified buyers. We have a great selection of Silverados and 2024 models are showing up daily. Roman Chevrolet will donate $5 to the American Cancer Society for every social media post shared. The goal is to donate $170,000. Test drive a new 2023 Chevy Silverado and check out the huge selection of pre-owned vehicles at Roman Chevrolet. 2313 West Main Independence. Your Silverado City. Kickoff goes out of bounds. One yard line, Matt. That Butler let that go, taking a chance, and that just skipped out of bounds, just short of the goal line. And that's a big start for the Butler offense. They're going to get some great field position. Yeah, that's a, a big win for Butler. They'll start on the 35. And we've had some kickoffs out of bounds this year where that was certainly the kicker's fault. That one, not the kicker's fault. That's just kind of how it bounced. Well, and when you add the wind, it, the way it's swirling, a lot of, lot of, lot going into it. Three minutes, 30 seconds remain. Ravens 12, Butler 7. Enzo Tedesco in place of the unavailable Jeremiah Moore just ran for a big 60-yard touchdown to give the Ravens the lead, and that's tipped and intercepted. Nichols Johnson picked off. Jaden Shepard with the interception, the second of the night for the Raven defense. And unluckily, they've both been off wide receiver ricochets. Coffeyville, we talked about it earlier in the second half. We needed a big play offensively. The defense needed to do something. And in essential back-to-back -back plays. Look at this. So Jaden's going to dunk in the bucket. Nice little tomahawk there. As they, they, they're, taking, they're taking a page out of the Cincinnati Bearcats yeah. playbook. The Bearcats do that with a basketball hoop where the player that gets the turnover gets to dunk, and the Ravens doing the same thing there. Nice little tomahawk dunk there by Jaden Shepard. Almost better than the interception. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, big play defensively. They needed it. And what a big redemption there it. for Shepard because he was the one that got called for P.I. in the uh, uh, you know on that drive but Butler got the touchdown. And that's a, I would call that a, you know making up for it, wouldn't you, Matt? Absolutely. First down to Desco. Hand off to Wiggins. Wiggins maybe got about a yard. Late push from the O-line might have gotten him two. And Matt, you know, it's interesting to me that we talked about how much, you know, four different running backs played against Wesleyan. Uh, we've seen Xavier Parks a little bit tonight. We haven't seen much Trey Jones. But with the game on the line late in this one, it's obvious who Jeff Liker trusts. It's only been Amiri Wiggins here late. Yeah, that's the guy. I mean, you want to go with your most sure-handed way, especially I think I heard earlier seven fumbles. So you got to go with your most sure-handed guy. Second down and nine after a one-yard gain at the 23-yard line after the interception by Jaden Shepard. One second to get the snap off. Tedesco did get the snap off. Trying to pull it back. Joseph Young has got it. Inside the five. Did he land on the player? They rule him down. I thought he landed on the player. We'll see if they look at it. Joseph Young is down to about the two-yard line as it stands. That's a gutsy play call to throw in this situation with your backup backup quarterback. Ball at the one-yard line. Are they going to take a look at this? I don't know. Under two minutes to go. The Ravens will walk up to the line. Enzo Tedesco. He's made some big plays late in this football game. Ravens with a chance to take a two-score lead. Minute 45 to go. High formation for the Ravens to Desco. Play action, and he goes down. Interesting decision to throw it there, too. Was an interesting decision, but I'll tell you what I do like. In a play that, you know, there not a lot went right there for Coffeyville. Enzo Tedesco felt that edge rusher coming from his blind side and went down. He didn't take the hit. He went down, and I think that's something we could be talking about, Matt, because if he did take that hit, he might have lost the football. Yeah, exactly, or tried to, you know, maybe tried to force something in there, but I'll take that smart football from Tedesco, although I don't agree with the play call. I don't agree with the call either, but smart play by the quarterback, and I'll tell you what, after, after that, uh, you know, after a slow start, especially with the interception on his second snap, he's made some big plays. That, yep. that touchdown run to give them the lead and that throw to Joseph Young uh, that set up the Ravens here with uh, what's now second and goal. It was yeah. almost a touchdown, but Enzo Tedesco, I think, uh, you know, if Jeremiah Moore is unavailable against Iowa Western, I think Enzo showed you he's the guy for next week. Yep. 
hopefully Moore is healthy. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully Jeremiah is okay. I think on the road, Jeremiah gives you the best chance to win against a very good Iowa Western team. But I do like what I've seen from Enzo Tedesco. I'm sure we'll like it a whole lot more if they can hang on for 98 more seconds. Minute 38, second and goal from the 11-yard line. Tedesco in the shotgun. Takes the snap. Now it's a keeper for Enzo Tedesco. He fights his way forward for about five yards to about the six-yard line. Jaden Dozier got up late wanting a flag. But it'll be third down and goal. Time Butler out. takes another timeout. So Butler has one timeout remaining. 130 left. Do you trust the field goal unit? This close. It depends where your fourth down's at. If it's fourth down right here from the seven, I'd kick it. If it's fourth down from like the two, I'd almost consider trying to punch it in. Because Butler needs a touchdown to win the game right now. If you have for the fourth and goal at the two, I'd almost say run read option with Tedesco and Amiri, whoever's got more space, and you see if you can punch it in and win this thing right now. I just worry because Butler's very aggressive special teams, just like Coffeyville. You get a kick blocked. Next thing you know, it's going the other way in this game. And they're already changes they're, quickly. They're already thinking about that, Matt. They're working on the snap and hold here. Dowd is the holder. Snapper is Parker Stone, the sophomore. They've got Connor Gellander taking some warm-up kicks, so. I'm sure Coach Liker is thinking the same thing as us. You know, if it's fourth down and within two yards, maybe you consider ending this thing. But right now it looks like if they can't convert here, Gallander is going to try and put them up eight. Because putting the pressure on Butler to need a two-point conversion is big. Third down. And Tedesco will try to get left, try to get a block from Wiggins, and he's chased down again. Looked like there was some... Potential there at the start of the play, Matt, but Butler's closing speed is elite. They've been very good at that all game long. They they do not let things get to the outside edge. So a minute 25 to go. Fourth down, Butler now out of timeouts. And this is about as big as a 25-yard field goal could be. Connor Gellander's made some kicks this year. This is his biggest one. Wind is blowing right. Of course, uh, you know, unintentionally because they were just trying to stop the clock, Matt. But also, this kind of gives you know uh, the icing, the kicker yeah. feel, trying to get Gellander to kind of you know start. He's definitely got to think about it. I was gonna say that's the goal when you're the kicker is always to just go out there and kick it. If you call a timeout, you start thinking about how big of a kick this is. And it's not just Gellander that has to be you know that has to capitalize on this play. Stone has to snap the ball well. Dowd has to get the hold down. I mean. There's three parts to this play, and all three have to be perfect with how good Butler special teams is. Connor Gellander takes his steps back. Ravens with a 25-yard field goal, trying to go up by eight. Snap from Stone. Dowd gets the hold down. Gellander's kick is good. Connor Gellander drills it from 25 yards. The Ravens get an interception, burn all three Butler timeouts, and add a field goal. 15-7 Red Ravens, 123 to go. Butler gets one final chance. We're back in 60 seconds on US 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network. First in Coffeeville and learn more. Medical Lodges Coffeeville, where they serve and enhance the lives of others with caring hands. This is Community State Bank at work. This is Community State Bank at work. This is Community State Bank at work in our community. From kids' activities to school programs to funding home and business loans, every day Community State Bank is at work in our neighborhood. Whether you bank at Community State Bank or not, they're working for you every day. Community State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. I'm Mike Avey, and at Community State Bank, we believe in talking to been interception for two minutes and three timeouts now kicking off leading 15 to 7 
with a minute 23 to go. Butler will earn this kickoff. Across the 15 and blasted! Ball came out! Did Butler fall on it? They did. Martavian Johnson rocked the return man. And it nearly ended right there, Matt. Man, that was close. What a hit. But also what great return defense to keep that inside the 20. And that was the run that was the fresh the sophomore running back Shankel, I believe, that fell on it. Uh, and like you said, amazing heads up play that he saw that ball pop out and he just dropped on it. Because if he didn't, Coffeyville was going to get that football and they were going to need us out and win this thing. So we saw what the backup quarterback did for Coffeyville. What can the backup quarterback do here for Butler? Their Winter Haven, Florida product. Lynn Nichols Johnson needs a touchdown and a two point conversion. That pass incomplete. They got to throw here, and the weather is not suitable for getting the ball down the field quickly with the passing game. And they have no timeout, so if they land in bounds, Matt, clock is ticking. I think every throw on this drive you're going to see is going to be 10-plus yards. A lot of drops, too, in this game. That's been uh, unclean game for both sides. Nichols Johnson, shotgun snap, second down and 10. Ravens show pressure. Throw outside. That is caught, and that is a first down. We're close to it, up to about the 25-yard line. The catch was made by Philip Caldwell. That's exactly the kind of stuff that they need. They do call him short of the first down. It's third and one, but he got out of bounds, so clock not a factor. One minute, eight seconds to go. Nichols Johnson takes the snap, looking to throw, looking right. Another out route. That is caught. He lands in bounds. Clock's still frozen at a minute, eight seconds. There it goes. Minute five, still, minute four. Stop for the first down. Nichols Johnson stepping up, trying to get it off. It is caught, and it comes out on the hit. Absolutely rocked. And that was, again, the guy who made the pick, Jaden Shepard. We've seen a couple really good hits that have separated the player from the ball. That's another one there, and a big one. And I like the celebration. We saw him dunk after the pick, and on that one we saw him unsheathe the sword and then stab it into the ground. I like that. Very nice. His celebration game about as good as he's played in the second half. Nichols Johnson back to throw, looking for an out route again. Gets rid of it. It's catchable. It's intercepted by Jabari Tiller. Did he stay in bounds? He did. Pearson's the one who came up with the football. I thought Tiller caught the ball. I think I think Pearson. Did they like split it? I, well, I think he knocked it out of his hands. But he just about he just about uh, tackled his own player there. Cameron Pearson is the one who comes away with the football. Might have snatched it from his own teammate. You call that an alley oop on the dunk, Matt? Yeah, that's that's the assist on the assist to Jamari Tiller, I guess. Yeah, and uh, that'll do it. Well, Coffeeville escapes. I wouldn't say that'll do it yet. We got to make well, sure we that get these. That is true. We got to make gotta sure we get these knees down. The victory. This is a quarterback that hasn't taken many victory snaps yet. Tedesco's got to get two knees down. What an upset if this holds. First one is clean. One more snap, and the Red Ravens that. have won their third in the last four. Without Jeremiah Moore available down the stretch. One more snap. If it's clean, it's over. And there you have it. Enzo Tedesco comes off the bench and saves the day for the Ravens. They defend Veterans Memorial Stadium and they win it on homecoming night. 15-7 over the Butler Grizzlies and the Ravens storm the field. Their biggest win of the season without a doubt, Matt Jordan. Absolutely. Huge win for this team. Just in a crazy night where we didn't see anything happen in the first half. Great defense. A cold, chilly, uh, late October football game in Coffeyville. Defense and the backup quarterback do the trick. Red Ravens improve to three and four on the season, while the Butler Grizzlies fall to four and four. And I said it before the game, Matt. I'll say it again here. That's the best four and four team in America. This is a very, very, very talented Butler team. That and defense is that defense is ridiculous. That defense is ridiculous. 
Ravens win it 15 to 7. Let's step away for 60 seconds. Red Raven post game show starts right after this on US 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network. solution for you. Their caregivers are prepared to help you with laundry, meals, housekeeping, shopping, and more. These helpful services are so reasonably priced, you can afford to pay for them yourself. In many cases, long-term care insurance or other sources provide assistance with the cost. Home is where the help is. Call Windsor Place at Home Care, 800-982-1866. Game show is brought to you by Community State Bank, Coffeeville Community College, Medical Lodge, Gillum Liquor, Dewell Commodity, Taco Mayo, Windsor Place at Home Care, NDB of Coffeeville, Coffeeville Regional Medical Center, and Roman Chevrolet. Red Raven post game show as the Ravens win a massive game coming weekend, 15 to 6. Over the Butler Grizzlies, I'm Shane O'Matt Matt Jordan alongside with me. Matt, you know, great festivities all week at Coffeeville Community College. Inducted some Red Raven legends into the Hall of Fame earlier today. A couple NFL guys as well. Uh, and what better way to end it off than with a big, gutsy, physical win over the Butler Grizzlies. Yeah, huge win. Just, uh, you know, this was going to be a gross game. We knew it from the, from the start with the way the weather is. And uh, then you add in the fact that, uh, Butler had threw in a backup quarterback in there that hadn't seen a lot of action this year. And uh, Coffeyville comes away with the victory, a gutsy win, big plays and defensive stops, forcing turnovers, and just did enough to win this game. Yes, they did. Just enough to win this game. Absolutely correct. And another day, Matt, and something that already jumps off the stat sheet to me for this Ravens team, they are running the ball well, and that's when they play their best football 234 rushing yards today for Coffeyville. Yeah, that's, uh, that's again, part of this recipe for success. Um, you turn the ball over defensively. That's what Coach Liker likes to see. You run the ball effectively, and you make uh, big plays in special teams. And if you look at the, the blocked field goal and the good punts, they did it on all three aspects of the game. They sure did. Let's look at some quick stats here in this one. Butler ends the day with 12 first downs, Ravens with 17. Butler 28 carries for 22 yards. They continue to struggle running the football. Red Raven rushing defense stays one of the best in America. Yeah, this was, again, I said it earlier, a strength against weakness. Coffeyville stops the run really well. Butler does not run the football very well. You needed to have a good run game in this game. Obviously, we see that from Coffeyville, and uh, they just didn't have the recipe to come away with a victory in a matchup like this. No doubt about it. About what I expected in terms of passing yards, Butler with 87, Coffeyville. 85. Uh, three interceptions by the Butler Grizzlies, two by the Red Ravens. It was an ugly football game, folks. We had a combined total of 13 punts today. Uh, we also had a shout out to the punters. A combined total of 20 penalties. Uh, that's a, you know, like I said, Matt. Uh, not despite any means, was not a perfect game by Coffeeville. They escaped with the win, but a lot of things to work on. And one, I'm sure the first thing Coach Liker is going to say: you cannot have 12 penalties for 100 yards against Iowa Western and expect to win. That no, game. absolutely not. Absolutely not. You can't have the turnovers like that. The mental mistakes by uh, uh, Crenshaw on the on the punt. You just that's the kind of stuff that gets you beat. And luckily tonight it didn't affect him because you know Butler made several mistakes themselves. They sure did, and. Uh, Final thing I want to point out is, uh, you know, something that I think really played a factor in winning this game, having the ball late. Red Ravens, 35 minutes of time of possession, only 24 for the Butler Grizzlies. So Ravens win T.O.P. by 11 minutes. I know it was, you know, a one-score game, and maybe T.O.P. doesn't matter as much, but in a gross, slick game like this, keeping that Butler defense on the field longer, I think it wore them out at the end of the game. Well, yeah, I mean, you saw the, 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 the two touchdowns essentially came from three, you know, three big plays. Uh, the big run by Tedesco, the run by Moore, and then the big pass for the touchdown 
from Moore. Uh, so it's surprising that they did win time of possession like they did. But all the other drives and all the other moments of the game, they were grinded out possessions where they just did enough to win field position and to come away with the victory. Jeremiah Moore finishes the day 4 of 8, 63 yards and a touchdown, 14 carries for 77 yards. We hope he's okay. Of course, yep. he left that game in the third quarter after that touchdown pass. Took a pretty big hit on that shoulder. Uh, we'll, of course, talk to Coach Liker at the Red Raven Coaches Show this Wednesday. At uh, You'll be filling in yes, for me. Yes, it'll be me this week. I appreciate that because Red Raven basketball gets their season started. But uh, I'm sure uh, one of the things you and Coach Liker will be talking about is how Jeremiah is feeling and if he's going to be available this coming week. Yeah, hopefully uh, he's, he's okay, nothing too serious. We'll see. It's either a shoulder injury or concussion. concussion, maybe something to do with the back. He took a pretty hard fall on his non-throwing shoulder. Um, so we'll see what the what what the – determination is there and of course good to see always in a moment like this you never want to see injuries but good to see a, a program like coffeeville looking out for the protection of their athletes and you know didn't try to uh, keep jeremiah out there after that hit didn't try to rush anything didn't try to force anything they're going to do their due diligence they're going to make sure that he's not going to see the field again until they know he's going to be okay and that's that's something where if you're on this red raven football team right now if you're the parent or loved one of a red raven football player or if you're a future player that wants to be a Red Raven someday, that's that's something good to see because, you know, uh, at the end of the day, it's all about furthering your football career, and Coffeeville genuinely cares for their players. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, Liger, the co college as a whole, uh, Coach Liker, the college as a whole, yeah, it's it's a, it's a great family here. But I, I you could say that about a lot of Jayhawk schools. Yeah. Butler, Butler's one of them as well. You, sh you certainly could. And, Matt, final thing before we get into our U.S. 98 player of the game, Miri Wiggins. I mean, he did it again. 18 carries, 92 yards, 5 yards a carry. Uh, and we saw it a lot in the second half. First half, they were splitting some carries with him and Osario. And we saw some Xavier Parks today, 7 carries, 44 yards. I liked what I saw from Xavier Parks. I hope we see more of him moving forward. But when the game got good late and the Ravens needed some big plays from a running back, it was Amiri Wiggins, and it was Amiri Wiggins every single time. No doubt in Coffeeville who RB1 is. Yeah, it's definitely Wiggins. He's He's been the, the guy who emerged through this season, and, uh, I, you know, I, I would I argue, you know, I, I like Wiggins. I'd argue that maybe Tedesco deserves a little bit of a mention as, as a player of the game, but you can never go wrong picking a guy like Wiggins. You can't, and I'm glad you brought me to that because the two that popped in my head, Matt, and I know we talked about the first one at halftime. I think Kate Dowd deserves a shout out. Yeah, I don't know if he deserves Player of well, the Game. As well, but he as took three big hits as tonight. a defensive back for, yeah. for Coffee and Jaden Shepard as Shepherd. well. Absolutely yep. right. We have options tonight. I think Kate Dowd deserves our U our first ever US ninety eight Tough Player of the Game. Yeah. He took some hits, he man. Did. He did, and he punted the ball well all night long as well. Jaden Shepard, of course, the interception uh, and the big hit late that jarred the ball out. But I think you got to go on a night like tonight where Jeremiah Moore was knocked out of the game. Player of the game's got to be the guy who scored the game-winning touchdown. Enzo Tedesco, 64-yard game-winning touchdown with three and a half minutes to go. Yeah, that's uh, that's the difference. I mean, it, it is a difference in this game. Asking a lot of your quarterback, comes out there first drive, throws a pick, and, you know, that's got to do something for the confidence. But Liker trust him, trusted him enough to keep putting him out there, and then he breaks one free and uh, showed me something I didn't really realize he had, no doubt. and that was breakaway speed. No doubt about it. Ravens win it 15-7. to seven. Big thanks to Stephanie Brees back in the studio for doing a fantastic job again flying the plane. Nick's got to be careful. Steph might take his job <laughs> yeah. full time. Yeah. She's been pretty dang good. Uh, but we appreciate her, of course. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, we had great conversation with Coach Tony Turner at halftime. Can't wait for Red Raven basketball starting on Wednesday. And, of course, uh, our friends down the, down the room here uh, from Butler uh, wish them a safe travel back to uh, El Dorado tonight. Ravens win it 15-7. to seven. Thanks so much for hanging out with us here on US 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network. Our next presentation on the Red Raven Sports Network and US 98 Red Raven basketball season starts on Wednesday with the Lady Ravens at 5.30 and the men immediately following them. We can't wait for that. Until next time, for Matt Jordan to my right, I'm Shane Neal saying so long from Veterans Memorial Stadium. Ravens, their third win in the last four. We'll talk to you next time.